Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting Thursday, June 7, 2018 at 710 in the municipal offices here in the town of South Deerfield. Um, we start to let you know that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Um, uh, the first thing on our agenda, we're going to meet with Dave Prickett from DC, DPC Engineering to speak about our wastewater system uh, project. Dave? Okay to come up here? Yes, please. please. Welcome. How are you? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So um, I guess this is our follow-up from a few months back, and now you're through another election, and um, we we're here this um, evening to, I guess, maybe quickly recap where we were at and then um, answer any questions that you and re uh, members of the public might have regarding the proposal. So following the, uh, the March meeting, uh, we put together an initial uh, scope um, schedule budget on March 19th. Um, we had a chance to sit and review that with, uh, with Wendy and Kevin and Keith. Um, we then uh, updated that proposal uh, a couple of days later. The scope stayed the same. Um, we were asked to uh, make an adjustment to our fee to the extent possible, uh, which we did as a courtesy to the town. Um, that scope um, has remained kind of uh, as it was from a couple of months ago. So. Mm -hmm. That's what we have um, this evening. Hopefully you all have a copy of the, the one dated March 21st. I do have a few extra copies if anybody needs one. But um, that is the, uh, that catches, up, uh, catches us up to speed. So okay. hopefully we can answer any questions that you might have to hopefully get started. Um, I know that a lot of members for the sewer study committee are here uh, and I'd like to invite anyone who has any information or any questions to please you know, raise their hand and, uh, you know, bring them forward so we can discuss them. Um, I'm not 100% sure where to start from, but um, I know that on the sewer study committee, we had spoken several times about uh, how to go about this whole thing, and, and it came right back to uh, this study again. Um, I know that you've worked uh, with the town in the past. Uh, I don't know how much involvement you've had in the previous study and stuff like that, or how that reflected in, in this, uh, you know, proposal. But a couple of things I'd like to bring up is uh, in here, there, I don't know exactly how much, but there was some work to do with the um, collection station or the pump station that Captain Lathrop Drive. I'm pretty sure that's all taken care of. Um, actually, technically right now, we're still waiting on parts because the right. grinder for the bottom of the part, um, let me put it this way. Right. When the original proposal, they had like 12 to 15 in stock. Now yeah. they have no in stock, so they're waiting on parts. Once they get the parts, they're gonna put them together. And I talked with Amp Electric, and they said they're about six weeks out. Okay. So. But for the most part, we're. That is correct. Once those parts come in, so this portion of that could be removed from your. Already is. Already is. If you look at. That it. wasn't a revised thing as well. No, it wasn't in the the scope from March 21st. Um, I did after discussion with Kevin yesterday. Uh, I was told that that was a likely change that was going to be requested this evening. So. Uh, the team and I went through, there's a one page oh. kind of color coded so, so fee summary. This. Yeah, okay. this, this eliminated the evaluation of the pump station to the tune of about 4,400 bucks. So okay. uh, the fee was reduced um, from about 78 or 79 down to 74 and change, so. Can I ask your thoughts about that? Is that, uh, is that a prudent move? I mean, have you, what, what are your thoughts about that pump station, what we're doing there? Um, I'm sure you're a little bit familiar with it. I don't want to put you on the spot. No, no, it's I okay. Just, I get put on the spot all the I've time. I've been anxious for this meeting for yeah. a long time, so yeah. I'm really here to gather information and what your thoughts are about what yeah. we're doing there, what we're going to do in the future, how that will tie into the whole project. Yeah. No, that's a fair question. Answer. I'm usually not short on opinions. My wife will probably Good. attest to that, um, much to my fault at times. But, um, you know, we, we actually looked at that pump station back in the fall uh, for Kevin as a courtesy. Um, I might not agree with the, the current approach. Um, yeah. That doesn't mean that it's wrong. Uh, you get 10 engineers in a room and you're probably gonna get 10 different opinions and none of them are wrong. Yeah. 
I'd say we're probably much like lawyers in that regard. So, um, um, but I think you know what what you're doing is important in that you're doing something. Right. So obviously that pump station, in my opinion, was not originally constructed uh, to municipal standards. It it feels more like a developer type pump station. Internal valves in the wet well, mm -hmm. pretty non-ideal from an operation standpoint. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't continue to use it. Um, so I think what we did was we presented Kevin with a range of alternatives that we would, we would typically look at for municipalities that would be more long-term solutions. Right. So my gut feel is what you're doing right now is um, probably more of a five-year fix, and that's okay. Right. I just think it's important to understand that it's, you know, it's not a, a one and done for that pump station, but your issues there are, you know, the electrical issues and the ragging, et cetera, and those aren't unique to your pump stations. Um, so, so we're putting, um, your hesitancy is us putting pumps underwater still and having, no, keeping I'm okay the with the pumps underwater. I don't like valves inside the wet well. So if you ever have to physically isolate the force main, ideally those are in a valve pit that's separate from the wet well so operators don't have to enter you know, hazardous, you know, right. environment. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes valves in wet wells don't work when they're subject to those conditions over time. But with that said, that's how it you is know, right really now. you're trying to, as I understand it, address mm -hmm. the electrical concerns and the ragging right. issues. So you're mm -hmm. putting in a new pumping system that'll hopefully better deal with the rags. Right. And then your electrical upgrades will hopefully improve the amount of times that those systems trip out and Correct. fault. So, you know, listen, it's not wrong. Um, it's I, I just, it's saying. a near term solution in my, in my opinion, but right. it's just an opinion. No, nope, I, I get that. And mm -hmm. in the long term, um, 10 years out while we're doing this, we can always revisit that and whatever we're going to do in the future here is not going to preclude us from doing something no, different I mean, there in the future. Kevin may or may not have shared the draft memo we put together in the fall, but you can certainly the, that know, one right there. Take a look at it. And, <clears throat> yeah, because we're looking. How we would approach an evaluation of a pump station. So largely yeah. what we had done in the fall would have been done in this scope of work in a more robust manner. Um, and it would have been interwoven with your sewer needs and your treatment plant needs. Right. Um, but it's okay if you want to take that out of the scope of work. And we anticipated that you may choose to do so. And um, we've provided you with what we believe the delta in the scope is. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I don't think Thank I you. dodged it, Trevor. No, nope, you okay. didn't. That's what, I'm, that's what <laughs> I need. Thank you. Um, does anyone from the Sewer Study Committee have any questions? Bruce. Sure. Yeah, sure not, buddy. If I can hear you. Center row here. Huh? Yeah. That's right. Okay. Wow. Uh, Bruce St. Peters, uh, chair, vice chair of the sewer committee. Uh, I guess one of the my, my main concerns is is the um, has been a discussion about uh, doing more emphasis on the immediate needs of the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant and incorporating a long term goal, but uh, and keeping in mind that we're supposedly doing two management areas for. Uh, separating costs and so forth, uh, none of those costs are broke down uh, in separate items on, on this. It's all done, done as a lump sum uh, for um, both plants in one. And I guess my, my, what I had uh, uh, interpreted the conversation was the, the um, South Deerfield wastewater plant was going to be addressed first and the old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant was going to be done second. In which case, if that ended up a year or two down the road, there might be other technologies that came in and didn't want to have to start redoing some of this. I realize that there is a certain amount of overlap as far as, a, but I just don't uh, want to get into, um, you know, when, when bills start coming in, how they're going to be separated out as to these management areas that we're su supposedly setting up. That would be my first question. I don't know whether you're ready, prepared to answer that or whether anybody is or, no, I Billing wouldn't be something he'd be talking about. Right. So that's, well, that's our thing to work out. So, well, no, actually, uh, would that be an issue for you to separate out your cost? You know, so whatever work you did in Old Deerfield came on one invoice, and what other work you did on the South Deerfield end came on a separate invoice. 
I don't see any reason why we we couldn't break things out that way if you really wanted to. Yeah, I mean, it, however, you know, the price shouldn't change, I wouldn't assume, and you you would just bill them out separate because there's no part of either of those systems that are, you know, integrated at all. No, as long as the, the town of Deerfield is gonna administer it as a single project, so, you know, early on we tried to break things out, you know, the site visits to each area, but as you move along, the tasks that you're doing are, are, are best done together. So you're, you're looking at the individual assets and you're scoring them and whether you decide to maintain a single billing district or multiple ones, if you wanna break them up, I guess it's no different than a construction project that has multiple schedules in it or, right. you know. Right, right. I mean, we, we already have broken it out, two separate ones. Yeah. So yeah, okay, thank you. Um, on C1, um, uh, there's a reference to using a previously developed and recently updated wastewater financial model. Does that refer to the uh, July 2016 uh, uh, presentation that you had made? Yes. Uh, in that, um, it appears that there's, uh, my question on that is you have a listing as uh, I believe 882 um, users with seven unbilled at that time for a total of 889. What was not incorporated in that, and there again, that goes back to how a fee structure is going to be developed, is uh, the assessor's models, um, most all buildings in this town, regardless of whether they're apartment house or not, only have one sewer connection. So even, and I'll use there, I believe there's one 12 unit apartment in, uh, in town here, so that is being ass uh, assessed as one customer but now in all reality is 12 sewer users. And you have uh, quite a few two family houses here and we do have a bunch of apartments. So uh, I guess if you're going to just use a water use base, that's fine. But if there's any consideration to using any other structure such as an EDU or ERU, whatever you want to call it or anything, uh, those numbers are really skewed. And that financial uh, uh, model, that previous financial model would not be a very accurate one. And I don't know what to tell you as far as that other than having to go, somebody's gotta go through the assessor's records and break out those units as to how many units are in each building before true financial picture. But that goes back to before you, before you could create a financial model that uh, I think uh, the town has to decide whether uh, we wanna consider a rate, a straight usage rate or an ERU or anything else because uh, uh, your financial model would vary uh, quite a lot from one to the other. And uh, especially uh, there was talk about uh, running two models, uh, an O&M uh, based on usage such as it is now and a, uh, the capital uh, plan which would be uh, based on an ERU so that uh, um, a lot of the um, partly unused residences that are in town, you know, that are unused in the summer and so forth, uh, would, are, would, are getting very low bills because they are not there. So um, there was a feeling, at least on the committee, of, uh, it, that an ERU might be uh, a better pro, uh, approach to a uh, billing model because in that way, because the asset, the sewer is an asset to the property. It's not to the, uh, an asset to the owner. And whether the house is vacant or not, um, the provisions still have to be made for that sewer to be a tied to that. So if there's going to be updates in the sewer, it should be a, a, an asset to the property. And, and that's why you know, I think the committee was looking at possibly ERU uh, development. But that's a, that is something that uh, I don't know whether that can be held off on your proposal until the town makes a decision as to which way they're going to do rather than having your back pedals two or three times with two or three different financial models. Yeah. Go ahead. Good? Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, I think we're actually on the same page with the financial model. The financial model integrated the user data as well as the assessor's data. There's actually fields in there for ED use. The only field that isn't in that model right now is how you've broken up your two districts. So each of the customers will get a, a one or a two basically in that field. Um, I'm not sure how you consider the ramifications of the different models without evaluating them though. I would think that that financial piece is
probably the most important element of the exactly. project. Exactly. So, but that model's developed. Um, there'll be minimal updates based on whatever new users have constructed or you know connected in the last two years. Um, again, that last new field that we need to include, but. You know, we spent a considerable amount of time, uh, particularly merging the assessor's database, uh, much to the pain of my associate James Rivers. He could attest to that, but it's a, it's a good tool. It's there, and we, uh, we already did look at the EDU pieces as part of the original evaluation. So. Oh, well, I didn't see that in the, in the yeah. presentation as far as the yeah. original. Because so that, that, that model's in really good shape. I mean, quite honestly, you know, the $2,900 that's listed for that particular task mm -hmm. um, is pretty minimal relative to financial evaluations and models. So um, the fact that the data exists and has been developed will be a pretty awesome tool to continue to use. Um, you know, I think we talked a little bit the last time we met about some of the challenges and the timing of how that lost momentum with the rate evaluation. And I think it's important this time to make sure collectively we're all on the same page relative mm -hmm. to what the community's goals are and the two districts, et cetera. But everything you've described um, is great. And I love the, uh, the concept that the town's looking at different rate structures for capital and O&M. I think that's a healthy evaluation process. So, How did I, you um, evaluate the hookups for um, residential, um, like the dorms up in Old Deerfield? So when we start talking about users that are not like a single family home or an apartment complex with a finite number of EDUs. We look to the water consumption as a basis. So we took all of the residential single family homes, figured out what their gallons used is per EDU. Every, every one of those is one EDU. And then we're able to extrapolate that against the other customers. So you either have assessor's data uh, that defines an EDU, you have water consumption that defines an EDU, okay. or you, you use the two to interpolate it's, um, there are customers where it's not an exact science. It's a, oh. it's a bit of an art form for sure. But um, I, I think you'd be pleased that that model's probably, well, probably closer, closer than it is. It's, it's a tough thing to publicly present, but yeah. there's certainly the ability to present the alternatives. And um, we'll make sure we do a better job of understanding what the community wants to evaluate for alternatives and get you the output from that. But, um, I guess you've already answered the... Uh, Captain Lathrop issue because I had some same thing on that that, that was included in that. Um, I guess my other uh, question would be to the Board of Selectmen and not you. Um, is there a forthcoming proposal from Stantec? No. <clears throat> no. Um, that wasn't the outcome of the meeting. It was to invite a proposal from well, the, the, the meeting, it was only a, straw, straw, a request for a straw, propose, uh, straw vote. It was a consensus was, decision of the, of the people. What's that? It was a consensus de decision. It was a, I, said, it was a I asked if you wanted to vote or consensus, and everybody said move forward with Dave Prickett. Well, that was not my understanding. Was, I thought it was because it was uh, stated that it was uh, not, uh, a, not to be a recommendation by the Sewer Study Committee. It was only a straw vote at, uh, without any further discussion. And that's why I'm asking whether, you know. Bruce, okay. we asked for your input. We, the decision is ours, but we wanted, to, we wanted the committee's input. And so it was a consensus. Everyone was on the same page. So is that going to mean that uh, we have no comparison uh, with anything else? And this is going to continue on in that direction with no other input. Uh, and I'm not trying to put you in a corner, by no, all means. Uh, uh, you know, it, this project is going to be a multi-million dollar project, and it's just kind of like, okay, here it is. It's yours. Mm -hmm. take, it, take it and run with it without any uh, other com uh, comparisons. Eric? Uh, yeah. I'll stay. Oh. Oh. That's good. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's not a question for you guys. Anyway. So Eric Brown, 72 North Main Street. Um, as many of you know, you know, obviously the sewer was, was a, is a concern of mine. Um, but I've made that publicly known. Uh, my question in regards to what Bruce is asking, it's my understanding that there were two proposers through an RFP process to, to provide proposals, an correct? An RFR, actually, to be more accurate. What's that? An RFR. RFR was a request for response. It wasn't, okay. you know, just to be clear with the mass laws about Yeah, fair enough, because my, my concern is, 
if you've if you solicited those folks to you know prepare and submit a proposal which they've done um, it, I was assuming that there would be another quote to compare it to just just again fair and equitable solicitation practices would mean that both groups would provide the same information um, you know therefore avoiding any you know impression of collusion obviously and, and making it available to get you know apples to apples comparisons to both presenters for best value is that is that not the case no and we're, okay like is that, that is that it's, Josh, I, could, do you want to stay at it? <laughs> well, I wasn't at the meeting for the interviews, but my understanding is that two firms submitted um, qualifications and responded to the advertising. Correct. Correct. And, and kind of submitted a proposal, and the proposals were reviewed, and then both firms were interviewed. I wasn't there. That's yet. correct. Yes. yes. So I think both firms were. Um, both yes. firms kind of okay. Okay. I have to pay attention to this. The, I'll give you a call. Um, okay. Uh, the request, the proposal request, <clears throat> and then both were interviewed? Yes. yes. Uh, you folks made a decision um, that after the interviews and evaluation of the proposals, that you selected one? Is that correct? Of their correct. presentation. Of yes. their presentation. And their proposal. Right. Right. Yep. They don't, they, at that point, they didn't put, put forward cost, but we felt which company we felt we would like to work with in the future as far as what mm, how wh what their knowledge of our town was what the work what work they've done already how we felt we could work with them in the future and um and it may be an implicit thought of what their cost might be but based on their structure and all but um but you never yeah. asked them their actual cost for comparison nope huh. so basically you, you've done a bit basis so on who you feel more comfortable with versus uh, you know, fiscally cost comparison of, of the two solicited firms? Stantec included um, nitrogen and phosphorus in their quote, which is a pro was approximately $6 million upgrade. So, so they do have a quote? Well, hmm. that was one of their, what they proposed. But Springfield was renewed, the Springfield um, water treatment plant was renewed without requiring any upgrades for phosphorus and nitrogen. Okay, but, but in regards to, to comparing apples to apples to two comparison quotes, we don't have that information, regardless of what Springfield did. I'm just asking. No, I'm, I'm no. just saying that it, the fact is that they, they, they wanted us to do the upgrade when potentially that was way in the future, and it certainly was not within the next five years, and it w took no consideration of the fact that the Conservation District is trying to do no-till and make sure that there is no phosphorus But again, comparing issues. what they would have offered for this, barring that aside, just like with the pump station, you could X that out of their quote. You have nothing to compare this quote to to, to no. what they would have offered. No, the correct? process was, and this came out of the committee, was ample discussion about this at the suggestion of a real expert that's sitting in the room who happens to live in our community. We're glad for that. We recommended we submit, we prepare a request for responses that went to several engineering companies and um, we had two responses and they were invited in and we we met and interviewed them they gave presentations and it wasn't a quote based process uh, it was a and then next step decide who you felt understood what we were looking for answered questions we went we, or maybe I asked them all because you asked me yeah. to do it that yeah. way. I, I watched it. I, I just, oh, you did? Like the, you guys had answered the question. There's just no comparison. We based on it based on feel versus It's a study. Cost. It's not an engineering project. It, it is to a certain extent. But I, I would it, say right. it's very much an engineering process because you're sorry. an engineer. It's, yeah. um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll return the floor back to Bruce that yeah. answers my question and maybe puts it in a little more perspective. I still think um, if you solicit two firms, you should ask for the, for the same for information price. from both. Thank you. We did. Thank you. Well, we did. We didn't ask for the price. price. So I would just yeah. add, um, you know, having, having looked look this through um, and being pretty familiar with, with the grades and hours, that this is a pretty reasonable, um, reasonable financial package for quite a bit of legwork. Um, yep. And, you know, not being familiar with, um, with uh, DPC, this seems pretty reasonable for what you're getting out of it um, to me, and, and certainly I'm sure that Stantec is every bit as um, qualified, but I think they probably have a little higher overhead. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I yes. look at this and the scope of work, and it seems very reasonable um, from my perspective. That was a general consensus. And like I said, I 
felt by including the nitrogen and phosphorus upgrades, um, they were not taking consideration. Um, you know, they just wanted to nail us for stuff. And well, like, excuse, excuse me a sec. I, I, go ahead. I, I'm sorry, Carolyn, but that's not my memory of what. Right. I'm sorry. Well, when they did the presentation, and there was. Yeah, and my memory of the meeting is that. And we can listen to you might want to. Can you come up just so you're in the. Yeah, you can come up for the table. I need a sound mic. I'm from Upper Road, and I'm a member of the Sewer Study Committee, maybe, if it still exists. <laughs> um, my memory of the of that meeting was that we got to a point where we we the suggestion was that we vote on Stantec versus um, Prickett, and we decide. And I said, "Wait a minute, aren't we going to do some due diligence? Meaning, uh, uh, check Mr. Prickett's references." talk to perhaps other towns, other employers who have um, employed um, the Prickett organization. And the agreement was that yes, that's what we would do and then we would reconvene. And I was actually shocked to get this. So that, that's all I wanna say, I just, uh, and, and, and I agree with the other gentleman that, that a decision seems to have been made. I thought but, it was, yes. But not, not in a public meeting that, you know, that no, I've been involved in. It wasn't. So. I, everything was relied on that uh, straw vote that we took after the presentations. But it, just, <clears throat> just so you know, it's, it's also my understanding that it was going to continue on and that we would get a price from both people for this engineering because it's just the study right. for that part of it. But I, I've always been uncomfortable with just getting one price. It wouldn't have taken any more uh, to get two prices regardless of right. what firm you know, offered and stuff. You know, we still might have ended up at this point, but right. you know, it, it's, you know, when you're spending anybody's money, never mind taxpayers' money, that you should always be able to look at the number and say, look at, not only is it the number, but you know, what we're gonna get for that number too. You know? right. and, and also, the, and, and also the, the, the second point I'd like to make is that to, to me, this is another study. This is another very expensive study. And I, I, I thought that our, that the, the and, and the members of the sewer committee can correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought we were moving in another direction that we were gonna work on um, uh, discrete projects rather than looking at this, this um, uh, at, at both plants globally in, in, as if it's one project. Right. Well, and that seems to have, I've, just that, based seems on, to have, that seems to have disappeared too. You know, and I, I don't understand. I don't, we, I, well, here, here's my point. Uh, we've been around here for 16 months or longer now. Uh, 22. 22 months uh, looking at this project, looking at that. Do we do a whole thing? Do we not do that? Do we go with this firm? Do we not go with that firm? We had a meeting. We brought in. We, anybody in the world, come and advise us on what we should do with our committee. We had two show up. Based on that presentation, we felt one was a lot more in line with what one what we can afford as a town and knows our product, knows our process and our plants more than other firms, and just implicitly, Stantec, we could go get another bid. I, I would be surprised if they were any less money um, and didn't know us as well. well so I, I understand. if you want to go, if we want to do that, it's up to the board to do that. I just think we've been doing this for a long time, and without knowing what our whole project is and where we're going to go in the future, how are you going to ever make a decision? We're spinning our wheels for 22 months on not but, making a decision. But that's not true because over the past 22 uh, months that we met a lot, we, there was a lot of information that we got and went round and round. Um, and that this, you know, we have and have already paid several hundred thousand dollars for what this is already doing. It's in the office. And then we further from that, before our time, the board acted and hired somebody to actually develop a building and all the stuff. And it was the second 
week of when I became a selectman, I met with Mr. Prickett and someone from uh, Western Sampson, and <clears throat> I'm looking at these plans, and I am far from a sewer expert, but I've been around construction for over 40 years, and, and I'm looking, and I'm like, 8 million gallons. Well, I, I didn't understand why it was so big, so the very next day I went to see Keith and asked him what was wrong with that, and I listened to him for an hour or so, and he educated me a lot, and I learned there that our plant, on an average, you know, processes a half a million gallons, and then it brought me back to this eight million gallons. What? I, I didn't, then I got looking at more, and there's a building on the neighbor's land, and but you know, it just it that just was like, 22 months ago. Right. So what I'm saying is, in that time since we've been selectmen, we know that we need to work on this thing. Well, we finally have an engineer that's going to take us through the process. But we, well, but we have the sewer right. committee did yeah. identify right. discrete projects that could be that that need to be done, which we could work on without a study. We we know that we need a headworks. Right. Perhaps we could hire Mr. Prickett to I work on the headwork. I think that's what he's okay. hoping to do. Uh, well, to me, this looks like a study. It is. And, and, and there are some things, you know, you know, you talk about giving alternatives. Well, this is more we get bogged down a year and a half or from now or two years from now on more alternatives. But we have discrete projects. We, we know we have a 70s era, 70s era generator that fills the building with diesel exhaust. Correct. It, that needs to be replaced. We don't, we don't, we don't need a right study now, for that. There's no blueprint to go forward, right? You need a blueprint to get moving. We can, there's, all, there's smart people in this room. We can come up with a and blueprint. It hasn't happened. Of, we can do it right now. We can come up with six projects that we can do that we know we have to do to keep that, the and South Deerfield plant running and protect our employees and our citizens. We know that we need a second clarifier pool, yes, and we, we know that we need to rehabilitate the first clarifier pool. Of course. We don't need a study to tell us this. I, I think this is, this is the. Am I, am I misunderstood that isn't this process so that you can lay out our next steps to go forward? I'd love to have you back up to the sure. table. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be up We need to keep you on mic. Josh. Do you want to say? Sure. I, and by the way, I'm not beating up. No, no, no. Listen, I mean. I, I liked your presentation last no, time. A lot. No one should be apologetic. I, we go through this in my home community. This is a healthy process. I'm not offended in any way. Okay, this is not a design project. It's not right. a construction project. But what it is is three things. Number one, it's an asset management plan. So it's helping you prioritize amongst your two plants and your collection system. Forget about the pump station, which has been removed in principle this evening. How do we prioritize the things we have? Okay, that's number one. Number two, it's a financial plan, okay? Correct. We listened 22 months ago. I remember being at that table, Kip. Um, in a lot of communities, historically, an evaluation was done. The third thing I should say before I move on, it's an implementation plan, so it's a roadmap. So it's taking the tools and data you've already developed and putting them into a plan that you can actually afford and build. I mean, that's what this project is. That's what we've lacked. Going back to how we had typically done engineering for a long time, you did a study, you built the plant or the plant upgrade, and then it was done. Well, times have changed. Affordability has changed. Western Mass is not a growth you know, area. So we have the same number of users, basically, that we did 20 years ago. So we have to take an alternative approach. I know that starting with the plan, we had a headworks plan that was on the table. It, it didn't move. Um, and there's reasons that it didn't move. People didn't understand the dynamic by which, how it was going to be afforded, who was going to pay, who was not going to pay. Um, I think. You should be he, thankful it didn't move. Well, right. we're going to have an eight million gallon. Exactly. <laughs> right. I don't remember an eight million. I remember that the headworks was designed for the the peak instantaneous flow. I don't ever remember an eight million. Yeah, well, uh, that's what it was. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I I wasn't involved in those details, but. Um, Three million. You know, really, that's what this is. So you could, if you want to call it a study and an evaluation, it's it pre-designed. You could call it any of those things. But, um, you know, I've, I've been at the table and we've contemplated multi-million dollar projects and grant applications for those. Mm -hmm. And we haven't been able to collectively develop momentum to move those along. So this was the attempt to try to listen and respond to the action which we'd heard from the community and residents. Now, 
we're not perfect. Nobody is, and uh, I understand the, the criticism, uh, but that's well, and, and that's I, our vision of the and project. And I'm sure that this, that you would that you would do this study in a detailed, professional way. But I guess what I'm questioning is whether we actually need to do another study now, when we have projects that we could do which need have to be done. Jack, can I? Can I? Please. Sure. So Please, you can. Just you know, having attended. Um, you know, a handful of the uh, sewer study yourself? committee. <laughs> oh, Josh Schimmel, uh, resident on North Hillside. So having attended, you know, a handful of the uh, sewer study committee, and I think I'm a member now, if the committee exists. If it exists. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I think one, the solicitation, I think your proposal answered the solicitation very clearly. Like it addressed all the things that were in the solicitation. And I think my, my takeaway from um, having kind of been an outsider and probably still being an outsider, and I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes, I will caveat this, is that like when I came in and I heard like, and I, I didn't see everything in front of me, but I heard about an expanded I heard about an expanded headworks with a building that wasn't on town property that already had been designed and that we were, you know, there was some consideration of moving forward with that. You know, to me, I was like, hey, I have concerns about that for the town. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, there's plenty of discrete projects um, that Kevin and Keith could probably pull off the shelf and do immediately. But there could be more important projects that they don't know about because they haven't looked or haven't had time to look because they're chasing their tails in town trying to fix stuff that's breaking down. So. You know, I think the concept in the conversations that I heard and participated in was about really taking a comprehensive look at all of uh, the infrastructure in town so you can prioritize where you need to spend. Safety projects are going to come up right away. Like, the town is going to end up having to spend some money on some things that, they find, that you find. Because when you look, you find things. And some things you can't turn away from and you need to address right away. Anything having to do with safety would be mm -hmm. one of them. But to start doing projects um, and not knowing what else, not knowing the unknown out there, you'll, you, you can spend good money and then you can spend bad money and then you can spend worse money. So I think it's important to, you know, you don't have to know every, how, what condition every section of pipe is, um, what condition every section of pipe is in, but I think it's important that you look at both treatment plants, you look at your pump station, you look at you, your critical infrastructure, and I think you got some expertise of the town in the room that can say, hey, this is what's really important to us and for infrastructure. If this breaks down, we're in trouble or we have backups in all of these homes. So I think you kind of rely on your institutional knowledge and you take a broader look at the condition of everything. And I don't know what the time frame is proposed on the, on, um, so you're gonna do all of this work, which is like pretty heavy lift, um, pretty heavy lift in eight, 12 months. You're going to turn around, you're going to have a roadmap, and then you can start picking your projects off of a menu and saying, this is why we want to do this one, this one, and this one. We can't afford to do this one, or we need to look at, you know, are we bonding, are we borrowing, are we looking for a grant? Like, there may be projects you can get grant for 100%. There may be projects you need to start saving for to do, and I think you need a, a, a roadmap. And, you know, my, my experience in this business, ha having failed many times, is that um, you need to know what's out there before you start investing in your infrastructure. Otherwise, you can make some bad decisions. And in this particular case, when you have such, such a small um, base for your rate structure, you know, 800 and some uh, folks, of which I can claim I'm not one happily. Um, <laughs> but when you have such a, a small rate base, every dollar is going to count for you because you could be looking at big ticket items down the road. So. To, to me, so, and, and not my, you know, this is just my opinion, um, and, and I don't claim to be an expert, by the way. Um, <laughs> so, but in my opinion, it would be prudent. I don't think that money, I don't think the money is outrageous for what you're going to get, and um, you'll, you'll have a roadmap to say, yeah, these are, um, these are projects that we think we need to do for various reasons and you have them all prioritized and you can have you can have short-term mid-term long-term projects that you can lay out there and say we need to be thinking about this in the future but we need to do this right now captain lathrop or head work stuff that you think you need right away um so that that was you know and, and i'm not so you're you make you're making a a, a good argument and i guess my counter argument is we have 
um, Keith and Kevin, who on a daily basis are intimately involved, and do we really think that a study like this is going to uncover some hidden, mm -hmm. some other hidden problem that uh, we that 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 Keith and Kevin don't know about number one and number two that the sewer study committee after two years doesn't know about. Well, I guess I mean it. I, I can tell you my experience having done like I mean sewer system assessments of thousands of miles of pipe mm -hmm. and and kind of being in charge of a sixty million gallon a day uh, treatment plant. Yeah, you're going to find stuff you don't know about. Yeah. Anytime you go and look, you're going to find stuff you don't know about. Mm -hmm. I, I can promise you that, and I think you guys would agree. Like, I mean, I, you can't know everything. It's underwater most of the time. Uh, it's underground. It's out of sight. Okay. So, so, so we might find something that's that's worse than the the, the you're not going to find clarifier. <laughs> you're not going to find a pot of gold. I can promise <laughs> yeah. you that. Eric, I just I, I'll, I'll add. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. It, I, I would agree with what Josh is saying because you, you, you came up with like, you, you never know what's underneath the surface. He's 100 percent right. In this, in this, I agree is the right way to go. My only concern wasn't why I brought this up is, Trevor, you mentioned the time, and you mentioned every dollar counts. It would take very little time to bring in the other proposer, and like Happy you said, to do it. and you could do the same thing. You take their quote, you ask them questions, just like you're doing here, and you cross this off. You add this, you get a full. We do it all the time with construction projects. Every time you pick a subcontractor or a contractor, you pull them in, you do it you, all day. You go right down line item by line item, and you pick your best one. And I'm not saying it's not you. I'm not saying it's them. But when every dollar counts, you want to do that, and, and it, it would only take a little bit of time. And I know you guys have said you've been spinning wheels, spinning wheels. We have the same in construction. Those that don't have time to do it the first time always have time to do it twice. Okay, so take that extra minute and make sure you're being fiscally responsible. I think, like what Josh says, you've got to do it, but make sure you're spending your money wisely. So that's all I wanted to add in my last two cents in on that. I, I just want to say that we did our, we know our, we're familiar with our engineering companies. We've worked with them in other capacities. We talk with colleagues. We know who does good work, who doesn't, um, or who, no, not that there are people who do bad work. We've had our own experiences, and so we've, we've done that part of the due diligence. We also know that, that. Oh, I was gonna let you finish that. Go ahead. Respond. Okay, oh, no, that's all right, it'll be no, quick. Ahead, so I understand that you're comfortable with your engineer, but as a professional who's built a lot of work throughout the Northeast, uh, United, United States, I've got subcontractors and suppliers that I'm very comfortable with, and they never always got the job because I had other yes, contractors and subcontractors I was very comfortable with. So comfort doesn't necessarily I imply. Comfort. I didn't say comfort. Uh, you actually, you said you were comfortable with the people you had. Yeah. Because we know about the work of other companies and his work as well, but also the experience of other towns trying to accomplish the same thing and we know that there, we sent it to them because we considered them, we know that they were capable, we used other references I'm sure they are, and I'm not disagreeing that. I'm only saying so is Stantec. So if it's a money so issue, is, we know that Stantec will probably be a lot more expensive. But you don't, you because you don't have their price. I mean, this is the thing, you don't know. You can say you do, but you haven't seen it. That's all I'm saying. Uh, gotcha. It's totally up to you guys. Um, can I make just one other comment? No. Go ahead. <laughs> How um, uh, a, uh, a study like this, uh, as a member of the Capital Improvement Committee, it seems to me that that needs to be presented to Capital Improvement. Correct? Here it is. <laughs> and um, and then have, it has yeah. to go um, be, to the town meeting. It, it will be on town meeting. So that's a year from now. It's not. No, we, have a, we have a special town meeting at the end of the month. And so is this something that this, a special town meeting can, consi can consider? Yes. Okay. Are you, Trevor, are you saying that uh, any finances doesn't have to go through the capital? I, did, I no. didn't say that. I just said it will, however the path is going to be, it's going to be on town meeting at the end of the month. Yeah. No, I guess the time frame comes in, you know, very important because you know, the Capital Improvement Committee has, has not seen any numbers here on something like this. So yep. that kind of puts, I would say. You meeting this week? 
right? <laughs> well, I don't. You wouldn't be. You wouldn't be able to. You know, you're you're looking at. Well, you, you know, we I need forty-eight hours. We could. We can post tomorrow for Monday or Tuesday. How I mean fast do you think you could get Stantec to get a price, Eric? How uh, quickly oh, or anybody else? Do they? You have to. You have to call them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. you, well, you're usually a week to get it. You know, you've mm -hmm. been presented it to them. They don't even be like cold calling them. Yeah. You know. They also may not really be interested. They may it, not at this point. I, you know, like, it, money. I would probably. They said, you know, they said no, but that, uh, that's unfortunate because they, they'll probably feel. See what Josh said. You're probably gonna feel put out. Your economy is the last resort. Mm -hmm. You know, it's unfortunate that. that so call Weston and Samson too. Oh wait. So, I mean, it, in from theory, a they should have the same debt. from a procurement standpoint, it, it's not an issue in Massachusetts for public procurement to award engineering services. Well, you know, obviously, so, you, you know so, that you do business yeah, in yeah. Massachusetts, so from yeah. a procurement standpoint, it, it's clean. Yeah. Typically, this is when you when you solicit, you solicit the full command from both parties. That's it's standard practice, but like you said, it's not necessarily do, mass law. Yeah. Do we think Stan Tech just as a or any other company is going to come in dramatically less money than this for this amount of work? I don't think that's so much the thing. I mean, well, then what is the uh, thing? From, yeah. Well, well. I mean, because that's really what we're talking about, that we're not prudent with our money and that every dollar counts. And I get that. I understand that. But I'm wondering, based on this proposal and other people looking at it, how far off can we be? Today, I got three prices from three different insulation companies. Mm -hmm. The guy who did my last six jobs was $4,000 more than his competitors on a $12,000 job. Because he worked with you six times. <laughs> Which is true sometimes. Is that the Camosa fee? <laughs> no, I, I'm just wondering, honest question, are we going to be that far off taking the time Having other bids, I mean, it, it feels like this is pretty fair for what we're looking at. I mean, I don't do this every day, but we need to get, you know, moving here. I think it's just you know, due diligence to see, or you know, that, that that's just my my experience. You know, we never mm -hmm. never do any work unless you get three quotes. And if you only get two, you only get two. But you take what you can get. You know? But you don't know because you, just like you said, you don't know. And I think Josh is probably the one that actually deals with this specific type of work every day, but at the same token, when you're dealing with this, you always get, you always, you know, compare your apples to apples. Not in disagreement, but look, I look at these numbers a lot. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and, and knowing a lot of the other firms that are out there, um, you know, if, if you got somebody even sniffing at this, I would be surprised. Right. And, and I didn't mean I, to tell you and you I left was... some money on the table, Mr. Prickett. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, one thing I would say is that uh, a lot of the other firms, uh, and, and I, I think people have worked with them, and, and they do find good work, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, sometimes small town, smaller issues, and big firm, and, you know, you don't, I think the town may have already experienced that with firms that they have worked with, where, you don't get the attention of the bigger clients. So, you know, maybe you get a little better customer service with a, a, a smaller uh, outfit that's kind of typically does work with um, smaller communities and you get better service. So th there is that. I'm not saying that's the case, but. Um, well, but Josh, I was turned off by the fact that the, they included the upgrade for the phosphorus and nitrogen, which wasn't necessary. And that was I, like I don't a, know. I wasn't there for the meeting. But that so. was a six million dollar cost. He just yeah. talked about it. I mean, it doesn't. It really, but why? If it's not necessary, it was, they knew I think they were, that Springfield they just, I, wasn't going to do we're it. We're not the experts, and we were just listening to them, and they were just, that was one. And thing that they were turned me off. Aside, aside from that, that turned I think me off. I'm sorry. Dave Prickett's firm had a lot more knowledge of our facilities, and has you know I think, and the people that work for him have been intimately involved with our facilities and knew our stuff a lot better and knew our, our team better and working with a small company, you know, small town better. I just, it felt like the presentation overall was you were gonna get better service, they knew our stuff, they've done a lot already. And, you know, Stantec could obviously do a good job, but, you know, like Josh said, they're a much larger uh, I firm. Think we're gonna pay. I think the issue, Trevor, is that no one's denying that, but it's right. just that, 
you know, you might get a price and they might come in at 80 or they might come in at 72. Mm -hmm. You might say, well, for the extra $6,000, we want to have these guys do it for right. more comfortable. It's just, it's just always a gut check. I mean, that's the only thing I think that was brought up here. I think we're beating it to death, but. Good. And then, like I said, I don't know if you, like you said, at this point in time, you know, they should have been called the same day. That, that would be standard yep. practice. Now they weren't. They may say, we're not even interested that, anymore, but someone should have. I guess out. that wasn't the process. That, that wasn't the that process. We given us here, so. I, <clears throat> Not that I Bruce. ran the process. But. I'd like to move on from that one. Sure. Get me to death. Yep. You sure? Um, one other question I had for Mr. Prickett. <laughs> okay. And that was on the financial model. Uh, right now, you know, you're going to be basing the rates, you know, your proposed rates for financing uh, based on at least the 2016 one was based on you know, the users paying everything. Right now, there seems to be some controversy whether that is going to be the situation, in which case that would change your financial model as well. So now it comes back to, can that be moved back a little bit somehow? Do he's aware of that. I mean, we've talked about this. Yeah, he's aware of that. We need to determine what we're doing with uh, covering the cost of this project, okay. and who is who? <clears throat> that has. It sounded like he already had a financial model based out, worked out. So. I'll uh, let him respond. No, with no tax pay, with no tax pay. No, I I think what we're trying to do, Bruce, is figure out first is to try to deal with both plants in your collection system is not something that's affordable. We kind of started there three years ago when we first looked at the model. Right. And, and, and that was and a trick rest, one of the rates. So the rest, hold, hold on, bear okay. with me for a second. Bear with me for a second. So first order of business is to figure out what we can afford. And by that, I mean, you have a budget of X right now. Right. And you know how many use, doesn't really matter how they eat the pie, they've got to eat the pie. So you're gonna have a debt service, including grants and everything else for a project of some magnitude. How you collect the revenues is what you're focused on. That doesn't, I mean, all of those iterations and options, none of them are wrong. They're all right, as long as you collect the revenue to meet your expenses. But the first order of business is, how do we get from the $40 million capital plan that was on the table three, four years ago, which just, it was a non-starter. So by doing the engineering first in a conventional manner, you get to an answer and you don't even know you can afford. One of the elements of this project is to figure out what is affordable. And then you have a prioritized list of assets and, you know, and they're ranked from one to whatever, 500. You can draw the line based on the money you have. Some of those assets can be served, as one gentleman said, relative to grants. Some might liken themselves to good grant programs, others might not. But that's really what we're trying to do and to just, you know, I know Diana had some experience in Orange. We started with a $22 million project before we did this approach. And now we have a $13 million project. It's still a lot of money, but it's what the town can afford. It's the max. So you end up having to make decisions about the things that are most important to you, whether they be safety, uh, environmental regulations. I mean, listen, if there's 10 things you, you really want to do, which seven must you do? I mean, okay, that's, so that's what we're trying to do with this project. So what the, that's what this task is. This task sheet is, is to pick and choose of that, and then you develop something from that, and then the town picks and chooses. And it's that. iterative. I mean, we're going to, first cut might not be perfect. We might not like how much is being spent. We might not like the revenue method that you're collecting the, the money to pay for it, and then you'll just have to tweak it. So the model already exists. What we're doing is we're taking it from this level to this level with... Okay. New information. All right, thank you. And can I just add something? I think those questions we all have about who pays what and how to set up the billing for the management areas and going that to whatever is all integrated into this. Mm -hmm. All of those questions that you and I have talked oh, extensively well. about. You know, well, so. they didn't see them in there. And that's why I'm asking. Okay. If they are in there, that's great. Okay. But I didn't see that they were addressed in mm -hmm. there, so that's why I'm asking. Okay. So, that's a good question. You know, so thank you. That was about it. Thanks for being patient with me. In trying to get this done sooner, how about if we did just one area instead of doing the study on both of them? Because it's going to be quite a bit of time that passes from the time you do your study 
to say South Deerfield, I'm sure is gonna be the most important, gets completed. It could be five years before we get to Old Deerfield. So how much time would it take you to concentrate just on South Deerfield first? The problem is, Kip, I don't like that idea because okay. um, as Josh pointed out, there's safety issues that we need to be aware of. And I, 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 I get that, but you're not gonna do them both at the same time, are you? You have to prioritize your safety issues. If the plant isn't safe in Old Deerfield and there's something that we have to fix, you have to do that. You can't wait and do South Deerfield just because you want to do South Deerfield first. I, agree, I think there is total consensus here that we want to focus on South Deerfield, but we have to identify the safety issues, I think. In regards to the safety issue, I'll step up again. That, I think there was something Josh had mentioned that, that um, our, our local town folks would be taken care of immediately, right? Regardless of their study, anything that's safety or, you know, would, would, would happen regardless of what, whatever the, the engineer is doing, right? You'd want to, I mean, you'd have to just for a matter of public health, right? So I don't know if that was, you know, sort of separate from what you have. No, stay up here for a oh, second because sure, sure, I just sure. want to, I'm going to try to use an analogy that's not yeah. in my wheelhouse. Yeah. And you can correct me. So, Kip, to your question, and Carolyn, I get the balance between the two. You can do a phased approach for the evaluation. So up front, you can look at South Deerfield, Old Deerfield, your collection system kind of independently. As you move along in the tasks, though, and you get into prioritizing of the assets and evaluating the finances, it's, it's kind of like doing construction in phases. Mm -hmm. There's going to be overlap that you have to deconstruct to fix that. So it would cost more to do it in a phased approach. That's correct. But you could, you could do it that way. That's, I mean, that's for the town to consider. And I think just one thing to, to, you know, to put out there is when, when we were given the opportunity to sit with you and develop a proposal and everything, there was no scope. Um, I mean, we, we developed that scope. I mean, the problem was clear. We want to get from here to here. Mm -hmm. uh, really what we try to do is articulate based on, you know, what we believe to know you and your assets and experience with the community is to try to develop how to get from A to B. So it was, as a consultant, it's tricky when there is no scope. Yeah. And uh, you get the apples I mean, to dump trucks, somebody's probably heard me say over the years. Yeah. But uh, it, it just what he's saying is true. If you break it into parts, it will cost you more total. You will pay you know, less up front for, for less work, and you'll pay the second half. But it won't be the sum of the two won't equal the whole of the first. And that's only, that, that's only just because of mobilizations, mm -hmm. you know, rework. And, and it was, so what he's saying is true. So regardless of how you decide to do it, that, that statement I would agree with completely. And then I, I would just add that then you might be making decisions about undertaking work from part A that you haven't looked at in part B yet, and then you get to part B and you say, oh shucks, I probably should have done this first. Economy of scale okay. you know, if you do and, two and, at the same. And I also think for just from a municipal budgeting standpoint, right? But your budget's pretty much set for the next year's capital. So if your study here is done sometime next fall, winter, put you right in the right in the planning stage for next year's capital. So just that's from true. a from a budgeting standpoint, it aligns pretty well. Just and I think that's just by luck, but it does. And as a construction person, regardless, safety should just be done. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't you can't hold up for safety. So right. I just want to make, that was one of the reasons I want to make that safe. point. Sure. Safety, it's yeah, it's always got to be first and foremost. Sure. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I have no other questions. I'm running out of Kevlar, Kip. Be gentle. <laughs> oh. Anyone else so, in the audience have any questions? I just have, I have one, one, one Yeah, question. please, Josh. Um, just on, on the financial model alternatives and on C2 development value of the wastewater treatment facility alternatives. And uh, just, you know, I, I just don't know this, and, and certainly Keith has far more expertise, but you're, you're, it just looks like you're talking about looking at some process changes. Could, and it may yeah. be that process changes aren't necessarily needed, but you might just need to upgrade equipment. So I just, that was just my one comment. If, if we talk any more, uh, just anybody in the audience, I'm, yeah. I'm getting multiple messages on my phone that people can't hear at home, so. Come up to the mic if you can. Just I know it's always hard. And we so the question, just to recap, there was uh, on scope item C two. Uh, what was the extent of the evaluation of alternatives that was intended relative to the scope? At least that's what I heard. Um, 
really what we were trying to do here, and, and certainly Keith can, can jump in if, he, if he'd like to add to this, is we weren't trying to change from going from one particular process to a whole different process. It was really, there are elements that you would like to have, another clarifier, a head mm -hmm. work system, and then there's things that you can do operationally within the system by uh, changing the way you add air, um, adding baffles to tanks to provide more flexibility. Those were the alternatives um, that we were looking at, and um, that is kind of the, the meat and potatoes of that particular task for the two plants, um, but at roughly $3,000 per, per plant, um, the intent was not to, to change. I mean, what you have is, is not broken. We can just try to make it a little bit better. That's the goal, safer, more efficient, mm -hmm. um, line ourselves up with energy rebates, uh, grant opportunities, et cetera, so. Thank you. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, so where do we go from here? I'd make a motion to um, approve the contract uh, for engineering with Dave Prickett Engineering for a wastewater systems condition assessment and needs analyst project. Um, so for the total amount of how much? Seventy-four thousand five hundred eighty-one eighty. Is that what you're recommending? Yes. Unless okay. anybody has another revision at this time. No. Um, I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Question. Jeff. In what fiscal year is that going to happen? As far as payment, I, I guess what I'm concerned about is that dollar amount. Should that be going through? the Capital Improvement Committee, and, and I'm not trying to put a stop on this, but I'm just saying right now, I don't want to be in violation either with the Capital Improvement Committee trying to approve something that by our bylaws doesn't allow. And I don't know how we get around that from, from what I can see. If, if that's supposed to happen this year, if it happens in, you know, as, as far as 2019, we're well, kind of stuck, I think, as well, far as as far as the committee, with the with the current language that we have. We could bring that forward to the capital improvement committee, then there's, go for our special town meeting. I, I yeah. was just going to say, there's no well, reason. That's, that's the, the only thing that I could think yeah. of is if it came through the capital improvement committee, even if we didn't take any vote or recommendation on it, we could move it forward. And We'd be grateful. Leave it to the selectmen as far as being able to amend that budget? Um, I don't see why not, because we wanted flexibility in the um, Capital Improvement Committee. Right. In for, I mean, we had no idea how much this was going to cost in, in the time frame of our regular review period. Right, that's what I'm saying. That's so nothing if, we, if, the, if the Capital Committee meets in, in um, either the week of the 11th or the 18th, and passes it on, it should be fine. It's not a question there's not funding because there's funding in the sewer reserves to cover right, it. No, I, I just want to make yeah. sure we're not in violation of the bylaw for the capital improvement committee, that's all. I would just say My that intention would, would be to go through the right process and have right. it go through and capital. I right. 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 Like I say, I just want to make sure we're doing the proper process here so nobody gets themselves in trouble. Right. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I would not foresee that. <coughs> Bruce. Bruce, Bruce, would you mind coming oh, up Oh, yeah, here? please. I'll get, yeah, I'll get another text. <laughs> Talking to the mic, too. All right. that <laughs> Since that subject brought up, uh, that's been one of my concern. And I, I feel the same way as Jeff. Uh, I do not want to stop it, but the bylaws have been ignored this year, last year, the year before. Um, and, um, you know, I think they really need to be looked at, and you know, it, you know one, of the, one of the things that says on here, it's very clear, all officers, boards, and committees shall, by December 1st of each year, give to the committee on forms prepared to it information concerning all anticipated projects requiring town meeting action during the ensuing five years. And then it goes on to uh, beyond that, you have some other sections. Uh, after said public hearing, the, uh, the, the uh, shall uh, the hearing 
The Board of Selectmen shall publish in the newspaper general circulation, the town website on Deerfield Cable Access, a notice stating the times and places where copies of capital improvements program are available for inspection, the date, time, and place not, not less than seven days following the publication when said Board of Selectmen and Committee shall conduct a public shall conduct a public hearing on said program. After said public hearing, the Board of submit, uh, Selectmen shall submit its approved capital budget to the annual or special town meeting for adoption by the town, which you've failed to do, unfortunately. Uh, so an expenditure was not included for in, the, in the capital budget for FY18. Uh, no expenditure shall be made for capital improvement requested by a department or commission unless the proposed capital improvement is considered. Now this is not the improvement, this is the study. Uh, under expenditures, such capital improvement program after its adoption shall permit the expenditure on projects therein of sums from departmental budgets for surveys, architectural or engineering device, options or appraisals. So if it's gonna do anything, you have to amend the departmental budget and not put it on as a town article because that's where it's supposed to be paid out of if it has been approved to begin with. Now, I don't wanna stop it and if the attorney says that that's all a bunch of rubbish, fine with me, because this needs to be straightened out. It does seem like we need to adjust um, When When we were talking about the bylaws, if it was an emergency, Jeff and Jack, we all agreed that there would be no uh, penalty for not. Well, this is not an emergency. This is, as you said before, this has started 22 months ago. But we need to do something, Bruce. You're it right. is an emergency. You're right. And all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, if the Board of Selectmen wants to be complicit in violating the bylaws, that's their business. But you just, it's, you know, I've just seen this year after year after year. And I, like I say, I, I've been torn over this for weeks now. It's the same thing. We use the bylaws when it's convenient. When it's inconvenient, well, there's an exception. Well, well then put the exception in the bylaws so that there is the exception. I agree, with, I agree with that because if, if you're going year after year after year after year, this happens, then we have a problem. We yes. need to adjust how this, how this gets done in the bylaws because we can't slow up municipal government for, I agree with you. for this process. We've got but, to find a way around it. Well, we did have an opportunity to put a placeholder Right, and we talked about that at the meeting, right? But we right. had no dollar, but we had no dollar of value, and, and no Unfortunately, one wanted to put a placeholder in for the senior center. Yes, we, we did. talked about amending the, for the- Skip for the put a, farm. the finance committee put a placeholder in. I was told we were not allowed because we didn't own the property. Unfortunately, this is something, if you go by this, you're talking FY219 and FY218. You want to take it out of this year, this is something that should have been uh, submitted for FY218 last year. As far as putting a placeholder for this year, okay, this is, you know, you're talking about taking the funds out from FY218 from this year. So the placeholder for this year would have been for 219. So you're crossing over two different years. But I, I don't want to stop this. I mean, it's been kicked down the road, but I'm just saying what it is. And, and if the attorney says I'm reading it wrong, so be it. I'd be glad to accept that. Anything we can adjust on Well, why don't we finish this vote and whether or not we actually send it out for to Mr. Prickett. We you got to work for nothing, to, Dave. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, 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 we're trying. We're um, trying. I think that we'll just I do uh, want this to go ahead. see where it goes. I know you do. I know. And I know you're a stickler for the rules. Okay, anyways, we have a, a motion and a second. Uh, there's no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, nope. Okay. We got that on the right yeah. Yep. Computer. I think I made the motion. I think Thank we're you. done with you for now. Appreciate it. No, it was good. <laughs> you may or may not get paid. So just we'll, so we'll figure know. it out. We'll figure it <laughs> we'll out. We'll figure that out. Get a grant. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. You too. I don't, it, you know. Well, I mean, it is a problem. It? It yeah, is. The bylaw is a problem, and, and instead of fixing it, but we, made, we, we did what you needed to do to operate. And, you know, right. I, I quickly made sure we complied last year and this year with these kind of problematic things in our capital plan bylaw, I think, unnecessary. Right. 
right now right. The, the capital planning committee is reviewing the language to try to make sure that we can address something like this. But with our current language that's existing, right. it, as Bruce right. pointed out, it, I, I don't know how we go about it. I just want to make sure that I don't know. I mean, that could be. We are. And Carolyn, no, it right, can't I be fixed. That group, we talked about. You have to well, change you know, we're going to have to do something in case of emergency, like if the motor on the dump truck blew up or something. You know, how are we going to address that? Well, the cap the capital committee can meet and dis and they can right. we can vote as to whether it's an emergency or not. Well, is it also something that whether to recommend or not? And you're decided right. it's an emergency. Is your committee ready to make a change on your bylaw for the next uh, we, town meeting well, that's coming up? We, You're not that close. Yeah, we, okay. We're, we were planning for our September. Right. For a uh, fall. Gotcha. Fall special okay. town for meeting. Bylaws. Well, the next one because we, you know, the next one we had when we sold the property, we would have to have well, another one. So but it was going to be. It's not. It's not. Tell me. Educate me. The, the purpose of changing the bylaw is not to solve a. a particular specific problem the the purpose of changing the bylaw is to to create a bylaw that's more functional in general exactly not no i that's what but i this mean is an can example. you get it changed this is so an example it, of and this is the kind of and, thing and that it happens yeah. year after year yeah, to try and to always try to figure out well, your well, unknowns only well, well, let me like defend the capital, area. the capital committee a little bit. I, I thought this year that the capital committee Very flexible. worked worked uh, efficiently, of course, and it did. flexibly, Absolutely. and uh, we did, yeah. we had many um, excellent presentations from mm -hmm. um, many departments, yes. and it, it worked out great. It does, but what, but what, it, what it hasn't worked that? it hasn't worked with the sewer department. And there were no proposals from the sewer department. And we asked for proposals. Right. But there, we, so, the irony is everybody here was involved with all of this, the capital planning, the sewer no, study, and, and, and there's you only all, like everyone 10 people. in this room, maybe excepting one or two, were yeah, involved so, and knew I, this I don't, was Eric got to pass. But I really so don't it's think it's... It's not like <laughs> things have been hidden. I understand, no, yeah. I understand. But, uh, but I don't think it's the <laughs> bylaw that's necessarily the... The problem. Well, well how do you address something when it comes up after December? Like, well, I mean, how do you like it, how the bylaw you, does say if there's an emergency? But if it's not an emergency, it's just like every day as you go along working. I mean, how do you only know like in three months what you're well, going to do? Well, this is a dis you, I guess you could come to the bylaw <laughs> meeting discussion. <laughs> no because, thanks. <laughs> you know, I mean, part of the, I think part of the function of the capital committee is as a low gear to slow right. to slow things mm -hmm. down not to speed things up, to slow things down, to, to increase the discussion. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, to to um, require the department heads to justify. To justify. justify. Right. Well, yeah. I and, and double check. And, and if everything's, because sense. everything can become an emergency. Well, right. I think that bylaw probably was created, and I was not involved in any of it, is because a lot of people in town were upset that money was being spent on these special town meetings, regardless of mm -hmm. the amount. And mm -hmm. that this was a way of putting a check in it and say, look, right. you know what? We're not going to have a special town meeting every time we need $50,000 right. for mm -hmm. this. And people don't really know or they're on vacation. Right. It, 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 what's troubling to sense. me is that we knew about this and why we didn't just put a, a dollar amount. Because we're constantly... How, 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 how do you? you? Well, you didn't. Huh? How come you guys didn't... Put something you were forward. there and you didn't want to do it, so I'm no, just saying. No, that's that. no. I, we didn't have a oh, dollar. I don't amount. know. I don't know, Bruce. I mean, do you want to put money up? I was at that meeting as well. I, I begged for you to put a marker in there. Wasn't and, didn't and have you, a and, dollar. And, and, well, we did not have a dollar amount, Bruce. You know, you you. I was not willing to put a dollar amount out of the, uh, out of the air. Well, a dollar amount for the feasibility study got pulled out of the air at $25,000. Nobody I guess knew what it is. I just closed my mouth on it because I didn't want to argue anymore. I tried to get a dollar amount in there, and nobody says, we don't no. even own the property. And then well, it was somebody else wanted to pull the dollar amount out of the air, so that was fine. Well, that's one of the, that's one of the so things. So guess what, Bruce? We're in, we're in a bind. We're yes. in a bind. Uh, and that's one of the, one of the uh, 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 things that I had sent through Jeff to the Capital Planning Commission, which you are on, is to, to de-gut the whole thing and follow, I believe it is, Hopedale. We have, we have, 
We have written. Well, I saw that. I saw that. But they, but even a new one would not allow for this situation. Okay, and that's there's one the uh, bottom line of your whole capital improvement bylaw. If you gut it all out, says the committee can make their own rules and regulations. You get rid of all that rest of that stuff, you don't have a problem. Our committee reviewed the bylaws and we all agreed on it. But this is for FY18 that you want to take the money. And even if you agreed on FY19, it has to go through town meeting and then it's at least 90 days, with somewhere around 90 days to get approval. As I said, if I'm reading it wrong, please throw it in my face because I do, I do want this uh, to continue. It's languished long enough, but as I said, we just keep using bylaws for convenience and not for rules. I wasn't going to bring this up tonight, but it was brought up, so it might just as well. It's fine. It's fine. Hmm. So. I, I agree with you. But. It depends on who proposes it. Absolutely. Right. The only reason why I brought it up was I was just hoping that we have enough time to try to figure out right. how we were going to do this and how we were going to do it properly so, so we weren't in any type of violation as far as bylaws or procedures or anything. Well, because, because I also think that this needs to move forward. There's no question about it. Well, the, the, the part about it is that we could, we do have time to bring it in front of the Capital Improvement Committee. And we, we do. do have time to get it. But what we don't have is the, the deadline of the fall. And it had to have been done before then. So we're out of order in that aspect. What do you I'm Maybe well, what, what was the day that could give us some direction? Right, go ahead, Bruce. Could this be earmarked the same as something else? Uh, uh, put in reserve for, uh, for something? That, right. the phone? That's over my pay grade. I don't know. Yeah. You mean so I, uh, you mean use the use the problem. reserve? But it's not really an emergency, right? You mean the, the reserve fund from the uh, finance sewer, committee? Enterprise. Not unforeseen. Right. Yeah. Right. Not unforeseen. Yeah. I don't know. But, but, deal with but I'm asking is if if, 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 if it could be earmarked go as schedule a something that you're in the process of negotiating a contract so that it could be earmarked backwards into this fiscal year. I mean, I don't know myself. Yeah. So we'll have to ask some council help. I don't understand the question. What's the question? How do we pay for this this year? Can this be we can start July 1st, plus? right? That's what it would be. Right, but that, but it's unforeseen. So, but can it be earmarked somehow? As it, because as you're in the middle of negotiating a contract, what you, earmarked by town meeting? Who, who's earmarking it? Well, until this can go through the uh, uh, town meeting and a fall town meeting or something, and at least go through a procedure, can it be earmarked for funds? What difference does it make if you're not doing it? That? What's an earmark mean? Your intention, or are you actually going to sign a contract? You can't until you until you approve the expenditure by town meeting. You cannot sign the contract. Well, that's, so I'm not sure what you mean by well. I, I don't I don't understand I, the the capital committee could meet. Mm -hmm. We have two to, weeks to, to consider and to make a recommendation or not. Yes or no. Yeah. And then the select board puts it on the warrant of the special town meeting and and there's right, a vote that's, that's what I was just saying to Carolyn so mm -hmm. I, I don't under, I don't see why I don't see that well, there's the, the problem I don't see is where the, the problem in the bylaw is a deadline and that we miss that deadline the deadline of December 1st yes. or is it yeah. is it the first yeah. or the fifth yeah. 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 December 1st but it but the bylaw also says that in an emergency so now no, we're gonna no oh that's not in there no, no, it's, not in it didn't get in there it is not okay it is not an emergency See, this has been going on for 22 months. It's going on for 10 years. <coughs> it's up to the town to decide what it wants. I'm getting to confused do. from the bylaw that we tried that we discussed right, exactly. to the, the actual bylaw. Right. <laughs> We're trying to address. We'll issues. hatch this out one way or the other. All right. Okay. The capital committee will be uh, pilot, standing pilot, by. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay. Carolyn, if you figure this out, could you send out an email as far as uh, if the capital improvement committee should be meeting? Yes. Um, Jeff, do you have? I love it. Do you just on the week of the 11th or the 18th? Is there any days that you can can meet, uh, Jack? And since both of you are here, do you know? 
Um, what we would like to meet. So let's let's um, see if we can have a couple dates. So 11th through the 15th. Um, well, we have the week of the 11th and the week of the 18th. Yeah. Well, to give I'm available anything. To give everybody enough time, and it seemed like uh, I mean we could do Monday them. might work like an 18th or a 19th, so we have enough time to post it. Will that give us enough time on the other end? Um, well, the um, town meeting is the 25th. 25th. So it should be enough. <clears throat> so okay. um, I'll send out an email for the 18th or the 19th. Okay. Okay, and as long as we can get a quorum, mm -hmm. then we'll meet. Jack, so either those days are quite good for you. So we only need one other person and we'll have a quorum. So is the, are the, for this kind of thing where there is no provision, are you uh, going to raise the issue of, of the same kind of notification that we normally give for the capital plan itself? Or, you know, I mean. Unfortunately, that's, that's the way I'm reading because you can't even meet this other one because you're supposed to have a... Uh, not less, not less than seven days prior to uh, the meeting, prior to uh, uh, closing the warrant. For annual town. Pardon? Does it say For annual, annual or town? special? Does it say special in the in the yes. bylaw? Okay. Well, we still have, we still have another property, right? So we're going to have to have another. No, I'm the report. The report shall be submitted to the board of selectmen for its consideration and approval no no later than the closure of a special or annual town meeting warrant. So if you're going to close the town meeting warrant tonight, you can't do that either. As I said, the, the, this whole capital, I, we addressed this back a couple months ago. Uh, we made some suggestions. It was thrown out of the uh, capital improvement uh, uh, committee uh, because it is a micromanaging bylaw. So we'll have to have a second. No. So. No, as I said, if, if, if the attorney says I'm reading it wrong, throw it in my face. I'll be glad to accept it. Can make we, it know, we know you're not reading it wrong. It's just a matter of what we need to do. No. And in the I'll scheme of things, certain bylaws get violated that are egregious. Certain bylaws get violated that are necessary to, to and, do and it I differently said, in order it, to accomplish the greater good. It, and we know that the bylaws need an, an over, you know, thing. So is I'm, a, I'm like you, you know, we're sticklers, and this bothers me too in that sense, but we need to clean up the bylaws because as we know, they're right. and as, and conflict as, with so much. And as long as, as long as people are aware of that, that's fine. But I'm, I probably will not go to town meeting because of that, because I'm not going to be complicit. In <laughs> voting against something that I'm appointed to look at and try to help correct, so. But uh, I, I think it's a damn shame that, excuse me, I think it's a real shame that um, everybody got put in this position. But it is what it is. It's all your okay. fault. Um, you no, it's the bylaws fault. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin, welcome. Kevin. Don't go anywhere because I got a question that's for you. Or you'll be able to answer. Give us enough time to post tomorrow. If we post tomorrow, we can do the 12th. Let's see if we can get a quorum on the 12th. So that way we give you an extra week to try to work this out? Yes, that would that be, be all right with you, Jack? <coughs> okay, so I'll, I'll send an email. 5.30? Yes, 5.30 on the 12th. Okay. Um, no, I'll Kevin, go for it. <laughs> Thanks. I just want to ask a hypothetical question. Um, if this was to be pulled out of a standard budget and not if, it's, if, if this was, hypothetically, if this was pulled out of my budget, my operating budget, my O&M, is this a capital, does this have to go in front of capital? Yes. 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 Okay. It is still a study. Okay. And but I thought the way you were reading be, it earlier, I, I thought something else, the way that you worded it, but. Yeah, I that was a different part. Okay. All right. All right. But thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Karen, you're willing to post on an agenda for the meeting? So. Yes. Yeah, we'll get that I'll, I'll put on the agenda um, this this study, but also just to make sure we have the final review of our bylaw. Okay. Okay. Well, we should run through it again. 
Right. Um, because we will be having another special town meeting, and so we want to get that to Wendy to get um, council right. to look at it right. to make sure right. that some yeah, of the stuff. What? We just I'm want sorry. To make sure that, get um, what to look on that. the agenda <laughs> for the. We're going to post a, um, a a capital improvement committee meeting for the 12th mm -hmm. tomorrow. Okay, Diana, and then. Um, what we're going to do is on the agenda would be obviously the review of this for the study, but also um, we will just make sure the bylaws we run through the bylaws one more time. Yeah, just review bylaws because we we have finished that up. We know. I mean, no, no, no. We, we know what the bylaws. Said. No, 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 no. Our we had revised our bylaws. We had been working all summer to, I mean, all spring to um, review the bylaw to change the capital improvement committee. You're saying yes. you want to you want to put that on the agenda that you're right. Doing. So the, I just send in my. Uh, do you have an agenda that you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Jack, oh, that Jack. would be lovely. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. yes. You're going to send just Jack posting. Posting. Send it to posting. Will you also so copy you know the exec is? assist at the same extension? <coughs> Thank you. We Thank you. Right. Right. So on the agenda. Right. Yep. So on the agenda, just we'll finish up the um, revising the bylaw. Then but when are you, you going to? I'll send out an email to the other members. Okay. Stating that there will right be now. A meeting Tuesday. Okay. Right now. Okay. To review and this. To review this. Right. Yeah. You know what? Oh, actually, Diana, when you get this, can you just um, send this out no, to the okay. committee? Yes. After Jack sends out the agenda. Yes. And, and Wendy, are you going to follow up with the attorney about this? What's the question? I think we all know that it's, it's not completely compliant with our bylaw. That's that's. So what do you do? What do you do if you're at town meeting and somebody says, "See, you, you're breaking the bylaw. You can't do this." It it depends on what the town. That I will ask. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can ask, that? but. That I will ask. We'll ask. Yeah. It's how egregious it is and what's necessary and what the town meeting wants to do. But we shall good to find out. Council yeah. to yeah. view. I mean, I'll, I'll bring yep. them all out. Yeah, bring a list out. <laughs> Would I? Or I'm, I'm not for violence. Saying right. that no matter what happens at this meeting Tuesday, whether we vote, recommend, vote, uh, not, not to, or whatever the case may be, would that not give the select people the opportunity to amend it? The bylaws or the, per, the article? The article. Amend wi what? Right. The Whatever article? we should vote for, uh, on Tuesday as far as in regards to, to this. Well, the capital improvement only makes a recommendation one way or the right. other. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so we're, we're going to close the warrant tonight. Oh, we'll close the warrant. And sign the warrant tonight. Or sign the warrant tonight. This is driven by the 90-day period that we had to meet right. and, and avoid July 2nd as a very poor day to have a article. town meeting yeah. for another Otherwise, article. Yeah, the other choice was July 2nd, and then it's too late. We're, then we're in violation you of could pass no, no, that's not the problem. It's just people would say, why are you meeting right before the July 4th? Right. So we made the determination the 25th made more sense, and it had to be done no later than that. I don't want to drag this out too much, but... It's okay, um, ask a good question. <laughs> So, is the other property, do you believe, going to close in time to be dealt with? You were in on the phone conversation. Okay. What do you think? I don't know. Okay. So, if <laughs> it's not going to, by rules, we're going to have to have a second special right. town meeting. We might know that. We, we will know that, that at that town meeting. So, would it be we can pass to, over it. at the Capital Improvement Committee, yep. to modify the bylaws and to put the bylaw on this special town meeting that way, at the second one, you can't. You have to have posted. Yeah, yeah there, there's a whole process. process. Well, yeah. Yeah. Too much time. You don't it's have not very, very very these rules, right? Too many more. Yeah. Another rule. You no. I, I actually Jean did check that. Down. I didn't really see a process it's in our bylaw for changing I, the I general bylaw. It, it, I didn't see a process in our bylaws for how we go about changing general bylaws. I don't like. Do you have accommodations for hearings? I think that's why I that didn't, whole thing I, I looked. I specifically looked for that well, yesterday. We've got there again, depending on who's proposing it, but it becomes a uh, select board uh, warrant article. At that point in time, it has to go to town meeting. 
well, usually the select board sends it out to the attorney but for. There's, uh, there's no pre public hearing or vetting right. through any other uh, well, process. It's just. Other than the town, no, it has to go out to town meeting to be voted. So yeah. a town meeting right. has to be posted. Uh, special mm -hmm. would right. be 14 but days, I believe. There's nothing that requires a, a public hearing before we amend the, a general the, bylaw. The, uh, not general. It's, I believe the public hearing only pertains to zoning. Yeah. And, oh, well, personnel has a certain thing to it, but anyway. Yeah. Um, so, it's, it and at that point, done. at that point, then, uh, as I said, it had usually uh, sent out to the. Uh, I, I'm a little hesitant about that because I want to, I, I want to think about it and talk about it more. Um, John Pereski and Bruce Hunter and I were at the uh, DOR mm -hmm. event today, and a lot of discussion about capital planning and and you know that could inform what you might want to do in a bylaw, and you know. This is the problem the town does. It does one thing, and oh wait, you know, uh, let's do it again. You know, with the same section of the bylaw because we missed something. So um, that's all I'm going to say. You know, maybe it makes everyone feel more comfortable to change it to accommodate this particular situation. And then, well, if there is more that needs to be looked at, we'll look at that. It, there, there is more to be looked at, and. Um, I don't know whether and you want to get on this subject or not. At just this in point. this bylaw. Well, just no, in this well, bylaw. We agreed to do a bylaw, you know, meeting in September or the fall, and that was what we've been right. working for. Right, and and you know, I I did see what you had developed at from the last meeting, and I still have a lot of questions. That, and I'm not trying to uh, impose my feelings on any committee, whether it be the capital improvement or anything else. Uh, I think our committee was charged with trying to make this thing understandable so everybody, so it was plain English. It's, it's to the point where, you know, these bylaws once upon a time were hidden in the archives and nobody could get a hold of them and so forth. It was very hard and it was all done between the attorneys and everything else. But now with the web and the internet, everybody has a shot to read it. And you read these things and you can get 10 different opinions out of the same sentence. And uh, some of those bylaws, as I said before, they, they actually micromanage government, which is stupid because <laughs> this is what you end up with is stopping right. projects like this that need to ad be advanced when there was not enough information a year ahead of time to, cr to develop this. And this is the kind of stuff that needs to be done. And, mm. and as I said, I read through some of the stuff that, uh, you know, that the committee had already submitted, and I, th I believe it was the second sentence. I still had questions <laughs> as to what definitions were of some words. And if I have questions on it, somebody else does, you know? And so we need to try to bring common English into some of this stuff and get rid of some of these, other, it's not just this one, there's other ones that micromanage the uh, uh, town government as well. It's stifled enough with this open meeting laws where you have to post everything, you can't even talk to anybody without uh, doing anything, much less having to live with these as well. So, uh, but, you know, as I said, it is what it is. I live, you know, I lived by a code book all my whole career. And it was a situation, even if the rule was up, down, upside down, stupid, and everything else, if that was the rule, until it got changed, that's what you had to follow. And if you really wanted it changed, you initiated it yourself. And that's, that's the only way rules get changed, is because uh, people finally get it, uh, have had enough with it, and they figure it's time to do it. But anyway, enough is enough, sorry. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I, I appreciate your volunteering to do this <laughs> review. Will you believe me? All right, moving on. Uh, spe well, <laughs> moving over a little bit. Special town meeting warrant article review. <laughs> Got it in front of you. Yes, we do. Do you want to read these? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, you can start you with the article. Okay. You don't have to read the whole. All right. Thing. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So Article 1, to see if the town will vote to apply the proceeds from the sale of land consisting of approximately 2.87 acres, more or less, shown as parcel C, and approximately 9.2755 acres, more or less, shown as lot 2, on the subdivision not required plan of land in Deerfield, Massachusetts, prepared for the town of Deerfield by... Harold L. Eaton and Associates, Inc., Hadley, Mass., September 30th, 2016, as recorded in the Franklin County Registry of Deeds, Plan Book 140, Plan 41, to the indebtedness uh, incurred 
in acquiring such parcels of land in accordance with general laws, chapter 44, section 63, or take any action relative thereto. Article two, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise provide a sum or sums of money to pay for the wastewater systems condition assessment and needs analysis project or take any action relative thereto. Article three, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise provide a sum or sums of money to pay for repairs for the police station roof or take any action relative thereto. Hmm. On that first article, I know that there's two parcels and I just wanna make sure one parcel is known as parcel C and the other one was lot two. It wasn't one lot one, two or three. Apparently not. Okay. Okay. And and what we can do, just do you want to talk about that? Yeah, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, so that's both parcels, mm -hmm. and we can make two motions. Um, we can leave it Split if the, the closing house. happens, if the purchase and sale happens on parcel C before town meeting. If not, we just make the one motion on, you know, we'll make the motion work just for the one parcel. Okay. The parse, uh, the lot so two, we'll which amend we it. Have to do. We'll amend it on town meeting floor. Yeah. Well, okay. we won't, we'll, we'll have a motion. Same. We'll have motions prepared. Yeah. And we'll we'll have the right then. motion. Okay. We'll it may then. say this or it may just simply. We'll just have to explain yeah. if one doesn't happen to go through. That would be we'll ridiculous. Have have so the 90 days, if it if it's not quite closed, the 90 days would be then from 90 days of the closure of that. Purchase and sale. So technically, we would have July, August, and so we could have a special town meeting. In the fall, in the fall yeah. to do the bylaws well, and we address if it's, the other. If it closes by the 25th, it's then fine, we're good. For, yeah, fine yeah, for yeah. the meeting. Then we, uh, but you can't say it's three months because we don't know when it will happen right. if it doesn't happen. Right, right, right. right. We'll but have I three months whenever from it, whenever. That some happens. at some point mm -hmm. in the fall, we would have we would have to have a town meeting to address that. Correct. Purchase and, or that sale, then um, we could do the bylaws at the same time. So either way is a winning yeah, up. we'll see it's how fine. far along we are with things. Okay. Bruce, do you think you would be ready for some things on by September? We can probably have a few, and if you want us to work on this, um, CIPC one along with the committee, that's fine. I mean, you know, it's, when I, last time I went in that committee, I felt a lot of animosity in the room. <laughs> well, uh, Bruce, that's not fair. It's welcome. just that the, the committee, had put a lot of time and effort into the revision of the bylaw, and 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 the committee agreed that. No, no, no. We're talking time. bylaws committee. The, the, the first time, the first time oh, I went oh, in here, I think there was a feeling that I was trying to intrude, intrude on the committee, and that was not the issue. That, I don't was. think that was okay. anyone's intent. And, I think. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry you felt that. Bring way. donuts next time. But I may not. I, the committee felt that it would be valuable to me to come in when you say Tuesday. Tuesday. I could probably do it. You know, if not, if you want to be on your own, that's fine too. No, that's fine, Bruce. I I, I can bring in the questions that I had and you can discuss them. It's not my decision. Mm -hmm. you know, so. I'll uh, send you an email. Let's, let's okay. with the rest of the let's talk. When is um, this? Uh, do you, do you, uh, oh, oh Jack, did, did Jack um, in the minutes have the final revised? version, the latest revised version of our um, bylaw. Do you remember? I don't because I haven't seen the minutes yet of our last meeting, but we did have a final draft. Yeah, so, uh, okay. So I can make copies and bring that. Yeah, or maybe. Or make copies can, here. Can I get a copy too, be, as soon as possible? Do you have it, Bruce? The, um, the latest draft? Yes, I do have a copy. Could, I, could we talk, talk? I don't have it with me, though. No. Right. Tomorrow, whenever. You never have any time. <laughs> okay. All right, I always we, let you. Should we really make a motion on this? Uh, vote on this? Yeah, yeah, I'll make a motion. I, or do you know? Do we want to make a motion for all second? Okay. You did? Oh. You made a motion? For no, I just, uh, I just oh, read them, just, but it wasn't okay. in the form of a motion. Oh, okay. But I would make a motion to accept this. All right, then I will second it. Is there any further discussion? There's none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. Why don't none we hands. wait? Do you want to do, go through the rest? You could sure. sign because we'll have multiple copies of yeah. the signature. So why don't we wait yep. to go through the rest of the meeting? Okay. Does that sure. work? That works. Great. The next one is a gift of the church building. 
So, um, I have these two motions uh, set by council. This is for the assent. Um, it's, it, assent is the technical term to the next step in uh, transferring ownership from the church to the town. Uh, you have this letter from council. And on the so, we would want to have a discussion of do we want to take this step, right? I think we do. That's been the plan right along. Yeah. Just making sure I'm no, saying I, in the right, <laughs> right format here, but. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think that whether, you know, we don't know the ultimate um, condition of the building, um, but I believe that it's a, a sound enough building that it's worth us to take and uh, to look into uh, rehabilitating it. Um, you know, the worst case scenario is that we have a good piece of land that's con con uh, contiguous with our other I agree. property. I agree. So I would say that it's a good move to accept it. And very grateful to the church for yep. I am thinking of us. I'm also very grateful. I mean, I, I don't, don't mean this in any particular way, but even if we had to raise the building and it would be expensive, it's still the land that it's on to be more valuable so than the cost of... Absolutely. But you're not okay. getting thousands of texts? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. They're coming, I'm sure. No, but I, I agree with that. I think, you know, if we can turn it into something, sure. we'd love it. If we yeah. can't, we'd love it too. Just to add okay. a comment that this is in the letter, but just for the record in the air, this is not the last step in the process. This is the next step in the process, right. and that the land transfer will not incur to occur until the judgment has been approved and entered by the court. Okay. Correct. We don't have control so, over the timing on that. So we're, just, we're voting to accept it, but it doesn't mean that we're going to own it tomorrow. Right. Okay. okay. Um, I, I was just going to say, do we, do we don't have, we still have no more definitive timeline on this. Let's get that's this closer, what I, think, I just right? said. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. about as Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's a step forward. Yes. I didn't know if it was scheduled on a docket or anything oh. yet. No. Yeah. I, I do think we should go in there. I'd be happy to. And look so, at it. Motion. Um, I move that pursuant to the vote of Article 22 of the 2017 Annual Town Meeting that the Select Board accept the gift of land and the building thereon located at 71 North Main Street, South Deerfield, pending the final approval of the court and the petition for approval of the transfer of charitable asset, assets and completion of all required transfer documentation as approved by Town Council. Second. Any further discussion? There are none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. This just Amanda's? authorizes you to sign as the it's chair. Second. Uh, okay. yeah. Oh, sorry. You didn't yeah, get, I don't get that. Sorry. Uh, second motion. I move to authorize the chair to enter into and execute the assent of defendant, uh, the town of Deerfield, relative to the petition for approval of transfer of charitable assets, namely the Congregational Church of South Deerfield property located at 71 North Main Street, South Deerfield, and the motion for entry of judgment. Second. Any further discussion? No. And then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous second? T. Yeah, well, I was just going to say if you want, that's it. That sign it all at the end of the meeting. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. sure. Right, right. Okay, the marijuana establishment protocol. Yes, I sense that there isn't unanimity <clears throat> on the board about this. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> um, and um, I just want to say, okay, well, um, I just, before my second event of the day was up at uh, Council of Governments where uh, one of the five commissioners gave a presentation on the overview of where Commissioners of the Cannabis Control Commission spoke at length. I have handouts that I brought back. And it became very, very clear. A lot of, you know, there were many, many towns represented in the room. People held boards of health, planning boards. No one from our, <laughs> where was it? But we're much further down the road, apparently. We thought we were behind. And also, um, Joyce, um, getting her last name right. Fortune. Fortune. Fortune um, was. Uh, at the meeting and she asked, and I asked, you know, because we might have all seen the article in the newspaper 
about the applications that were received in the various counties around the state. And Joyce is a select uh, woman. Select woman in, 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 in Waitley. And I asked, I said, can you tell us what towns those were from? They didn't know. And, um, and then Joyce was asking later in the meeting about samples. She's looking for sample host agreements. Um, Montague has one, and they're, they were the only town that identified that they do have a proposal. Um, that's all I'll say about that for now, but what it became very apparent that this is a very, very stringent process. I actually brought my notes in. Um, they had something like, you know, it was like the horse race, you know, people just started applying. Um, they had 1,002 applications. Um, 1,002? I thought that's what he said, and a whole lot fell out of the process right away. You know, some of them just sort of mm -hmm. testing the whatever. Wow. Um, 108, oh, 61, would you, maybe, I don't know what the 1,002 came thousand down from. Two, I don't how know. How can you have 1,002 uh, Okay, that's strike that from the record. <laughs> no, 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 but I mean, that's like three, that's like three per community, every community in the whole state. I mean, there's only 300, there's only 351 communities. There are people, there are just people trying hard. This is the, this is the, this is the, you know. Yeah. Um, that means you're not putting one in Florida and in Monroe. And, so, oh my gosh, I can't, I mean, 100, 108 pending, 61 withdrew. Um, there were 30 retails among that group, um, 30 cultivators, I believe, as well. At any rate, it broke out. You know, the, mm -hmm. at, the, at the end, the other speaker um, who got stuck in some horrible traffic, apparently on 90, on, on the inner, on a turnpike, so we got there late. But he had that kind of information. Um, th they're issuing more and more guidelines, and, and um, it's going to be for the, you know, what did they say? The one with the strongest gene, you know. Who really have their, you know, everything in place, and it's likely, and from what I've heard, to be an out-of-state, you know, um, now there, and also to further give me the sense that, you know, I, we'd be less competitive in this region, perhaps, um, you know, in these smaller communities. Maybe, maybe Montague would go forward, but um, is that there also there's some preferential categories that we don't fit into economically? Uh, yeah. The disproportionate Dis impact situations. Yes. So, um, so anyway, all the way it just Greenfield. So Greenfield, there's four in Franklin County: Greenfield and Montague. Right, and, and Montague isn't one of those, dis, you know, disparate impact communities. So Greenfield is, I believe, and right. Munson, <laughs> and then the rest of the Gateway communities: Lawrence and Springfield and Worcester. You know, mm -hmm. those larger communities that have um, economic. You know, their, their poverty rates that, you know, as far as exceed many of the other communities in the state. So your sense so, is this is going to take a while and it was very stringent? Yeah, I think um, we can go for You, you need mm -hmm. to discuss what you want to do if you want to follow this protocol or entertain host, uh, pro, host agreement proposals now. Um, you can do that. Um, but, you know, well, talk about what your concerns are about the protocol. And, well, you know. I, I feel it's really important to discuss the host agreement and, and to, you know, whoever is interested to submit some kind of basic host agreement proposal or whatever they're proposing so that we have time to do some discussion and, I mean, my big thing is we need to have a robust, really good program in the schools. I mean, this is why I started working on this like four or five years ago because I, you know, the, our, my kids grew up with D.A.R.E., you know, and you can talk about it being successful or not, but the fact is it got our police officers into the schools and the kids had a good relationship with the police officers. So as a minimum, I want our resource officers supported. I want some kind of successful, professional, good outreach program design that will work with the kids. And, but to get physically get our people, our mm -hmm. police officers into the schools mm -hmm. so that the kids have a relationship and are being given the proper tools to make the proper decisions. Was that in the host agreement you had with the uh, medical marijuana? No, okay. no, because that wasn't one of the, um, I mean, that was the understood that they were gonna pay. That's why mm -hmm. we opened up the public safety account and all that kind of stuff. Right. 
but it wasn't outlined okay. as a program. But because this is now not just medical, it's recreational, and we have so much more competition and potential competition, and it's going to be everywhere. Now I want a really good program, and I want them, uh, you know, who's ever interested to be in our town, they need to show us that, that they have the ability to produce a program that's going to be successful. And so I don't, I don't have any problem if they want to go forward with the, the planning board and, and the, you know, whatever other process they want to do in a parallel to this or whatever. But to me, the host agreement is key. If they're not the people who we choose to work with and who we vet, then there's no reason for them to go to the planning board and waste the planning board time, because guess what? They're not getting a host agreement. Well, one thing I'd like to suggest to the board is that uh, no matter if we get one or 20 <clears throat> applications, and, uh, and I'm not saying they should take months, but I really don't want to jump on it too quickly. I want to look I at agree. it, read it. I agree. I, I that's mean, why I want, I, I, I I want the said, email going out to anybody that's interested. Yep. We're taking the host agreements okay. as of now, okay. and we're going to take time to reevaluate them and to vet these people and talk about them. And, what is the potential of you being successful in our community? And what's the chances of us having a good relationship with you? Very and I, I want us, I mean, we're gonna have an interview process and, and, you know, I want input from the schools. What, what do you, you know, what are we doing now that you like? And then let's, when the, they bring forward the educational plan or whatever they're gonna do in the schools, We'll say, well, how, how does that, f you know, feed into the strength that we, are, you know, are enjoying now or whatever? Okay. I mean, we we can, we have to have some discussion too of what even we want. Okay. Well, here's a question. There's two things I sent you, council's letter, yeah. in response to um, when I heard individually from you um, the concerns each of you or non-concerns of each of you, um, you know, who felt this was a good procedure or did, you know, wanted to change it up a little. Um, Council, and I asked her in this, with the, if you read this memo, um, you know, she says, in my experience, many proponents attempt to begin by negotiating a host community agreement before proceeding with other local approvals and without demonstrating its ability to comply with the commission requirements. She says, this is not a prudent course of action for the board. As a threshold matter, the board should be aware that all of the steps noted above must be accomplished in order for a final license to be issued by the commission. And then it goes on from there and I stop. <laughs> I, I agree with that I, and I agree we shouldn't jump into one, but I, I also feel like we should at least see what, what's out there for opportunity and just, you know, together they, we look at that and say. Well, they, they have been told they can issue a That's That's fine then. I mean, I think we're all on the same page. And, in and that this has been sent to yeah. five or six and, you know, who have contacted interest. Me or, you know, well, I right. guess uh, so I, I guess what I want is to say, come start the process right now. If you're interested, we want to know about it, and I want. That's what the letter of intent is. Right. And look at that first paragraph. And, and we them. have we have guidance, and I have it in another memo from council on what should be in a good right host agreement, and, and I have sense. a sample one, and we could go from mm -hmm. there. But this this allows them no. to come in now with you know that first letter and then you can go from there no. they, they did say at this meeting though they highly recommended not doing multiple host agreements oh no yeah okay I, this is going to be an interview process and we pick i would like to pick well, a backup person i want to understand or a group do you whatever. also have a host agreement for yes um Other, no, yes so there, there, there may be several. There may be a company that just wants to grow and is not looking at retail. And there may be, a, you know, vice versa, just wants to retail and doesn't want to grow. Oh, right. So there may be multiple host I'm, agreements. I'm so I'd like different to- Different kinds of- sure. yeah. Different kinds different of different process. Firms. So I just want to understand, you know, what's out there for interest and then mm -hmm. take a look at what their plans are and what their- yeah. So somebody growing might have a much lower threshold of you know, getting off the ground than somebody who's trying to retail in our, you know, with limitations that we put on so in this town. So did, did the Cannabis Commission just say, do they do cultivation applications on a different track than retail? It sounded like they're doing every, they have different requirements, mm -hmm. and I have all that in the handout. It's extensive. Right. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like they're 
doing everything at the same time. They're hiring people. If you know anyone, <laughs> they're hiring lots more staff and they're hiring inspectors and they maybe some will be out in the West. I mm -hmm. don't know, but she made she actually made an announcement about that. Um, so I answered your question. No, I, I just I, I just want to make sure that we um, we'll get to your back to your point mm -hmm. about <clears throat> them coming to the select board first. I think it's a good idea to interview them, but I would really like the select board to be the last stop for the final approval. Uh, because right. Oh, the, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But oh, I, I, I would like the initial. I would like to have the initial meet and greet, if you will, mm -hmm. here. Uh, but you know, uh, going through the process of the planning board or the other boards, EBA, whatever, you know, we might learn other things from mm -hmm. the, these people and what's going Agreed. on. You know? Oh no, and I don't have a problem with that. But what I, I wanted to do was prioritize. I mean, let them know what, what we're going to be looking for. If, if we if if we have one or two. Right. That, that we want to continue to look at. We can, I think oh, it's definitely. only fair to say, well, look, we're interested in you. You can take sure. the risk of going to the planning board or whatever. Right. But if there's somebody that we're not interested in, I think it's only fair to say, you're, you're not going to get a host agreement from us. Sure. If they don't meet the certain sure. requirements. Well, one of the things I'd like to see in this, and, and maybe this could be to you, is like <clears throat> what you always say is, whoever's involved in this process, this board or Everybody stay in your own lane, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't want the planning board to say, "Well, what are the select board going to do?" Or what's the, right. well, what are the, they you just know, do their tasks. Do your task. Do what you're supposed to do. Your approval is contingent on everybody's approval, mm -hmm. and, and we all know that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can learn that. We can learn what everybody else is required or done, and then we can take all that information together, along with our initial. Though well, my understanding is, I mean, they can. Um, they can apply for provisional license, but they have to have the host agreement, even if they don't have the other things in order. But if, if it looks like no, they're in the mix true. for that, they can be considered. It's just. I can imagine. I didn't throw tomatoes. <laughs> it would not have been the right I, scenario. No, I know what you're saying, Kip. And I'm, ultimately, I agree with that. But I, I think what Wendy is saying, uh, and I'm sorry I didn't go because I had that pipeline meeting. but. Um, I, th I, th I think they have to, I mean, we can verify this, because I honestly don't have a problem with that, but mm -hmm. I think they have to have the letter of intent, and then they can get a provisional license if, they have, if they're negotiating the rest of these. the, the mm -hmm. host and everything else. But I think, I think they actually, to, to receive the license, actual license, they have to have the host agreement signed, right? I think they need to have it to... Mm -hmm. um, Get the, get the process moving along, yeah, yes. and these other and show evidence that they've started, they started with the with the, the, other the, stuff. the planning yeah. board and mm -hmm. these other things. The is it is it our? I know that it's I, at least I have. And, you know, and it is mm -hmm. confusing. I was to say I haven't thought about this. Maybe you two have, but I would prefer as a town that whoever we select signs our host agreement. Oh yeah. I don't want to get a host agreement from them. Sex would be always right. skewed their way, of know? course. And if I mean, yeah, but no, the, look the, at the, they have to submit something to us. Yeah, so so we start well, to negotiate. Yeah, but, we, but can, we, we, we can, we can amend all, it That's what Joyce was asking for yeah. at the meeting. She wanted to see. She had never seen one, and she was asking for other towns. Right. She had Montague. She was asking the commission, "Are you going to put those up so we can have models and templates to look at?" Mm -hmm. And so answer? that Did is. Did they say anything about that? Uh, and I'm, <laughs> no, because the reason why is because there are not that many completed host agreements. Right. Um, there well, that there many were, many. there were. I think a lot of what was well. A, medical. Yeah, the medical is the model for it, and um, we have a lot to improve upon from the one we had, and um, I think ours was one of the first ones. Right. But the medical. And if that had been successful, they could have, they would have been a priority. Right. For yes. licensing for retail. Right. Was so. one of the one of the big things that I saw I learned in that post agreement, which was really bad, was that we were going to get the town was going to get a percentage of their profits, and right there alone. Yeah, know, but you can't do that now. Oh, well, okay, okay. But the, the the reason that's such a big problem is because anybody that has a business, you can take in ten million dollars, but if your expenses, including <laughs> your salaries, are eleven million dollars, you know what your profit is zero. Right. And. That's well, just actually, the way. I mean, so. it does provide, you know, we get the, the tax it's on the, the retail, tax, yeah. the retail, but right. both on either, you know, we, what are we just allowing the two, right? Cultivation and, and retail. Right. Okay. We, 
the host agreement can include up to 3% right. on um, sales, on revenues. Revenues. That's different than profit. Yeah. Yeah, I, right. I just want to make sure that that's, that's one that you that intentionally like use the word profit. And that can be for, use the word profit. And that can be for grower and, and retail, oh, right? Grower yes. and retail. And we still have okay. All right. So do you want so us to take any action on this, or um, do you? Just, let's mm -hmm. proceed. I think proceeding with this is fine. I'll work. I think, uh, yeah. I'll work to get more right. host agreement samples for us to look at, and great. They, this is what they've been invited to do, so you can okay. begin a conversation. Makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we're all on the same page. Letter yep. of intent. Right Looks good. So can I do some appointments? Yes. Oh, can I just? Oh no, that's all right. I'll come under new dip business because I. Okay. I wanted just to update everybody on the pipeline appointments, stuff. Appointments, which, so, sorry, let me just pull this out of here. Was there a, a blurb you wanted to read? Diana, can I ask you, did you ever, or has anybody been going through our website to update sure. every member of every board's we, term? We had yeah. this approved during okay. the last couple Thank of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. We want to, because there's so much, so many requests now for people who are interested and want to know what's, you know, I sure. mean, we should do that anyway. Right. That we're really anxious to get that correct. And, and okay, I'm going to read some names. Um, which you can move it. So, can I make a motion to um, appoint for the following um, committees and boards and organizations? So, um, this is for DDIC. Um, for a term that expires in 2021, Richard C. Andrioli. The Deerfield Police Department Crossing Guard for terms that end in 2019, Henrietta Cocott and Diane Baronis. This is for the Personnel Board. This is for the Personnel Board for a term ending 2019, Kimberly Russo. Do you want me to run through all of them and then we um, take a vote or do you want each? That's up to you if you'd like I to, because I, I know there are some new, I, if you wanted to talk about people. So maybe I'll, I'll no, just I'm stop right, right there and just make a motion to approve those. Um, I'll second that. All those in so favor? Uh, so any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I will just say that uh, Kimberly Russo just stepped up. We had, we yep. I can't thank her enough for doing that. It's oh, going to be yes. wonderful to have her experience. Next, we're meeting next week. They are meeting next week. I'm going to move to the uh, police department because that was next in the list. So this is um, this is from Chief Chief of Police um, John Pacheric. Uh Dear Honorable Board, the following list uh, following is a list of recommended appointments with current pay rates um, effective July 1st, 2018. I'm requesting part-time personnel be appointed from July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. Um, uh, these are full-time office officers with in, uh, indefinite uh, terms. So John Pachurik's, uh junior chief, Harry Ruddick. Uh, do you want me to read the amount? No, of, you don't. You okay, don't, good. You don't have to read the full-time officers because they're indefinite. We gotcha. Them already. So special officers, uh, Deborah, <coughs> Deborah Austin, uh, matron administrative assistant, Robert uh, Ward, Warger, Warger. Warger. Officer uh, Joseph Michkowski. Michkowski. I'm going to ask for help here. Okay. Uh, Joseph Michkowski the third uh, officer. Uh, Gary Sebelia, officer, court officer. Jesse uh, Roz, uh, Rosnick, officer. Chad Risley, officer. Brent Griffin, officer. Mark uh, Wil Wilkins, officer. Elizabeth Unitas, officer. Christopher McDougall, officer. Marissa Smith, officer. Nicholas Feld, officer. Connor Parnell, officer. Matthew Bader, officer. David uh, Gendron, officer. And Robert C. Johnson, Jr., officer. Uh, special appointees, um, term, also term ending 2019. Kath, uh, Kathleen Belanger, matron. Louise Kelly, matron. Uh, Ken Wamet is the Conway Chief of Police. James uh, Savine is Waitley Chief. Donald Bates is Waitley Sergeant. Crossing Guards, I mentioned already, were uh, Diane Baronis and Henry Coca. Henrietta Coca. So make a motion to approve those. 
Um, second. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. What's that? The EMTs. Yep, I'll do the EMTs yeah, and the wayers. public wares. So the uh, public wares for, again, this is term ending uh, 2019. These are annual appointments for public wares. So uh, Jordan Bashaw, Warner Brothers, Miles um, uh, Downey, Warner Brothers, uh, Corey Hamilton, Warner Brothers, Zach Smith, Warner Brothers, Kurt Neal, Warner Brothers, Ryan Pachalis, Warner Brothers, uh, Leo Chacon, Chacon, ASMG, Allstate, must be Allstate's materials group, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, Robert Green, Allstate's, Todd Jarvis, Allstate, Janine Savoy, Allstate, and that is it for the second. public wares, second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So these are EMTs uh, for South County, um, EMTs, uh, all for 2019. Actually, it's uh, South County EMS. Yeah. These and are EMTs are EMS, for South. Well, some are EMTs, some are paramedics, correct? I would say so. So, yes. uh, we just should get that on it's the, the list. Appointment, it's the appointment of South County EMS personnel. Right. There. But we, we should on this list have. Who, yeah, paramedic or EMT. Paramedic okay. So, um, Adam R. Martin. Aliyah M. Kuzmal, Alicia H. Zronig, Anthony J. Muzinski, April M. Fernandez, uh, Brian J. Per Peralt, Calvin J. McKimmy, Cameron H. Dunbar, Carly O. Eaton, David J. Zamoyski, Eric J. Fitzgerald, Eric J. Drumgool, Harry W. Ponce, Gary, Gary W. Ponce, um, Hannah Enstein, James P. Bardis, Jonathan J. Van Lant, Van Land, Joth, uh, Joshua H. Clemens, Lori J. McComb, Louise E. Kelly, Mark F. Tremblay, Mason F. Jenkins, Michael J. Curry, Nair O. Ragoza, Philip A. Snow, Richard A. Gallo, Scott J. Chapman, Sue Ellen F. Bellows, Teresa A. Emerson, Timothy J. Uh, Drumgool, William R. Kimball, Yvonne M. Marino, Zachary A. Uh, Bastoni, and Zachary Smith. Second. Any further discussion? Just that he did a good job. Yeah, well, I, I apologize for the names. No, you did a great <laughs> job. Great job. Well, good. All Thank those you. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Okay. And so we'll have other appointments yes. later. Um, yes. Wow. And we're trying to get it up, so we'll hear from our parties from the community you might want to step in. Um, yes. Uh, we, uh, we have two. Um, Vacancies on the Conservation Commission, which is a critical board, and um, anybody's interested feels they have the qualifications, someone who knows about wetlands and conservation and um, or would love to learn, uh, please contact us. Do they have enough members to function? I don't know. Well, I think they, what is it, it's a five member board. Correct here. So they I still, if, all, if the other three turn up, then they have a yeah. quorum. They do? They have a quorum. Only if all the other three may be made into a quorum. But so. pretty, it's a lot of work for I mean, depends what's going on. Mm -hmm. If there's an no application or initiative. Mm -hmm. We're going to wait for somebody to step up and see what happens. Oh, no, we got to try to find somebody. Find somebody. You want to talk about it? Oh. I was just gonna if when you were done before we uh, dissolved, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just gonna run through what's on your agenda for next week oh. and take any input for that if you have it at this sure. time. Well, I actually have one new business item. Um, uh, I had the um, our pipeline meeting tonight, and um, you know we our MCAP group still stays together, 
uh, Municipal Coalition Against the Pipeline. Um, so the FERC is having um, its docket PL18-1-000 in case anyone is interested in putting in um, a letter. But um, FERC is having a process where they um, would like to have feedback. I don't know really how legitimate, you know, it would be, but if somebody needs, I mean, as many people need to respond as possible just so that they can't say that there, nobody had any input. There's three different areas that they're, the methodology for determining um, the need for the project, including considering, oh, I'm sorry. Um, the methodolo uh, meth methodology to, for determining the need for, of the project, including consideration of um, uh, different agreements and contracts that already exist. They want some feedback on that. Um, and then the second part is um, FERC's consideration of potential exercise of imminent domain and landowners' interests. That was, you know, the discussion of does a private company have uh, the ability to buy imminent domain to take your property for profit? And, you know, it was questionable under that. Um, 1938 Gas Act, and it and it also brought up, you know, that really Chapter 97, which is our conservation restrictions by the state, some of the state conservation restrictions, you know, that was totally steamrolled. So that needs, I mean, we should talk about that. And then the third thing was um, the FERC consideration of environmental impacts. And my big thing is, you know, whether it's you want to talk about climate change or climate evolution or whatever, it doesn't matter. We're having more intense rain events and more intense weather events. And um, they're in, in their environmental impact process, they don't take any consideration of climate change. So I, I mean, I would like us to send a letter as a town, you know, to have some comments on those three areas that, on their review process that I felt was lacking in the FERC process. But my biggest, something? yeah, well, I have some, yeah, points that I wanted to bring up, but my biggest deal was that the client, the, the environmental impact, they were, you know, going up and down under rivers, all that kind of stuff, but there was no consideration, I mean, it was minimal consideration for environmental impact, but none for climate change, and, and it's just, it's not right that, that, that isn't, I mean, they want us to be more resilient. They want us to consider everything, upgrade our culverts, do all these things. Why wouldn't you require that as part of the, you know? Well, one's um, the state and one's the federal government. I know, <laughs> I know. But I'm just saying, we, you, you, we, I think it's important to send a letter of comment letter. And then the, the, other, the other letter, um, you know, Trevor, you had um, brought up the, you know, Adam Hines's, uh foundation, mm -hmm. school foundation review, we should send a letter. But I was just hoping that we could wait one more week before we sent a letter of support because um, uh, I need to, I, I, uh, Patty and I are gonna get together next week with Brenda. Um, hopefully Brenda will be around in the afternoon. We just, we still haven't sorted out that foundation budget thing. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I just can't even imagine getting a 25% cut of our chapter 70 money. I mean, there's got to be a mistake. I'm pretty sure there's a mistake. But it just, our profile doesn't match Weston, Wellesley, and Dover, and all those kind of communities. It just doesn't. Well, are you saying it's a 25% of the Chapter 75? Well, it total? could be, well, it, it's more like 28%, but it's between 25 and 33%, and you know, a third mm -hmm. of our Chapter 70 money under the new reform bill could be cut. What is the status of the of the ref, the change in the formula? It's going forward. Yeah, they're moving. They're, they're moving, moving forward. They want us to send a letter of support, and I, I mean, I don't want to send a letter of support if it's especially we if it's going to. Probably should meet with um, Steve Kulik about it. No, mm -hmm. Steve is willing to help us. He just he yeah. wants to know what what's wrong so he can get it fixed for you know before he leaves office. Mm -hmm. well, we can't. This we got to figure out. This, this was is, the discussion the other night while we were talking about this, questions for our new superintendent. I mean, this is the schools-ish they should be 
It is. No, in the forefront. it's our it's issue. It's, it's our it's, issue too, it's, but it's our, uh, the they should be cost, organizing us the on their schools, behalf. It, the schools well, cost 68% of our budget. It depends on what town you're in. You know, you look at know. you look at Conway and they're, um, you know, they're looking, they're hoping the changes come through because they're looking to get an extra $100 in this change. And they said, well, it'll help, nothing. it'll help Conway, it'll help Frontier. Sorry, Waitley, Conway, right. Sunderland. You know, yeah. Waitley, Deerfield, right. Sunderland. You're right, to the end. So, um, it, it's it's definitely an issue that we need to talk. We we were talking about it at the meeting the other night while we were formulating questions for our new superintendent, interim superintendent. So, I told them at that meeting that I would like to get you know one of the questions is is will you work with the town to start working on some of these issues, um, discussing regionalization, discussing the foundation budget. You know what, what can we do. As a community, can we work together with finance committee? You know, not not a gigantic, big I meeting because it all falls apart. And nobody does anything. But if you can get a few select interested parties together to start, start hammering this a issue out, committee. a working, a working committee, committee to just yeah. to kind of look at these issues and see what the impacts are for our community. Okay. Well, nobody's so. doing anything. So I've been harassing. Um, uh, you know, that's why we're going to have this meeting with mm -hmm. Patty and Brenda. See if. We can move on. Patty's been trying to track down that uh, zip code thing, but nobody's responding for to her. So, no, no yeah. So, yeah. I, we got to we got to get involved, and we have to spearhead it. Who knows what the formula is? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Who knows what the formula is? Where do you get that information? Oh, um, well, the foundation I, I, formula. Yeah. You can talk to the MMA. Yeah. And, well, and, yeah. I mean, I've looked. I've looked. Then, and you yeah, do talk about this tonight. But it's Sorry. it's felt it's it's based on your wealth factor. Yeah, we and have there a high EQ. There compared. has to be a mistake. We, we have our, a high EQ. No, there doesn't. The, it could just be. Go ahead. There, you were you uh, talked about. Yeah, it today. John Robertson from the MMA was at a meeting I was at today, and he talked a little bit about this. And he is there is an increase in Chapter Seventy. You know, eight mm -hmm. is up, but it has to do with the regional schools and how right. it, it it doesn't affect the regional schools. Uh, proportionally, it, it affects them disproportionately. So he's suggesting that um, he said there's equity provisions that affect the regional school districts, and so that this that you need, may need to look at your assessments to ensure that they're correct. So I don't really understand how the how the formula's changing in this way that it's that it's um, well, well the you know, meeting that Trevor and I went to schools, but the, it. it we were we were supposed to, we were in a group of communities that were overpaid. Mm -hmm. We were we were there. Trevor and I were there at the meeting to advocate for organizing to obviously you know get more money. So I was shocked to find us on a list that should this ed reform go through, we're we're going to have less money. What do we get for education from just from Deerfield? Do you know? Okay. Oh. I don't have it. Up right you, I, my yeah, but my I do budget have it. book I do is have in the it. car, but yeah. the overall budget there was four million dollars. Four million for Deerfield, yeah, and roughly. It's like um, we get three or four thousand dollars per kid or something like that. The, okay, so this would take effect for FY twenty. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we'll. I just think we have to look at the formula, and and you know this happens every with every formula because no, no, we're no, such no. a different kind of state, mm -hmm. and when they look at things, they generally look at things like EQ, equalized valuation, and I. There has we, to be a mistake, though, Wendy, because we were we were in group, uh, communities that we should never have been with. Oh, you mean those? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, in that list, there has to be. It's like redistricting. It's the gerrymandering mm -hmm. of the formula. Uh, All right. So well, I don't I mean to make light gonna, of you're it, gonna, but yeah. you're going to follow up on that. We'll, we, Before will. we will. We will. Sure. Make two quick announcements, yes. unless you have some other nope. business. Go ahead. Well, okay. I wanted to just tell you what's coming up in a few yep. minutes. Okay. I'll make. I wrote that I down. Actually have another, I have an uh, announce, another okay. announcement, but you're not allowed. No, <laughs> no, that's not under new business. So when you do your announcement, all right. I just wanted to mention. I mentioned this last. Uh, meeting, but I, uh, but I always, this, it's a foam fest fun day. <laughs> How could you not mention this? Sponsored by the Deerfield Recreation Department. Inflatables 2, Saturday, June 9th from 1 to 3, um, pre-K through 6th grade, Memorial Field. It's free. Um, rock out in the foam pit, jump in the bouncy house, swish down the slide, challenge yourself on the <laughs> obstacle course. Food and drinks are available. Um, so that's going to be really fun Saturday for the kids. So please bring them out to Town Hall. I think it's right out back. Um, what time is that? Uh, from 1 to 3. 
Is and then, what, that and then after, after that, that I'm going to make a plug, plug at 4 o'clock. Any artists in town or people that want to help, Jay Savage was so awesome to donate his tractor trailer truck and a 48-foot flatbed trailer for Sunderland's Parade. So we're going to be painting and decorating some signs, and we need all the help we can get. And then Saturday morning of the 16th, he's going to bring it over here. We'll get it all set up and then drive it over to Sunderland for the parade. <laughs> Yeah. So, bring your paintbrush, some paints. It's going to be fun. So, whatever you can do to come and help. We'll probably do it Sunday, too, and then maybe again that following weekend. But we've got some good ideas, and there's a lot of people coming to help. Well, there's so not much time in the following weekend. Cause there's we're not to... a lot of time, but <laughs> please come and help. Bring your kids, because we need kids on the trailer, and, you know, it's going to be a fun thing. Um, and then concerts on the Common for the Deerfield Rec Recreation Department, which would be Wild Cattle Heron, July 6th. Uh, July 20th is whiskey, wine, and Coke, or cola. Um, let's see, uh, July 27th is Fortified Blues Band. And these are at 6.30 to 8 p.m. on the South Deerfield Town Common. And the rain site will be here at the Town Hall. So that's what I've got for you. Oh, also, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Bring your mosquito spray. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Bring your um, okay. the, My only announcement was that um, uh, June... 21st is at 4.30 is the um, Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition annual meeting. And I just wanted to RSVP, so. Um, that was, you said that, I think I had something else going on that day, but what, what did you say it was, the 21st? 21st. Yes. I've got that down. So I thought there was a um, well, Franklin County we, Association meeting. No, that, that, that got, got moved, moved right? to the 28th. Okay. Yep, and, and what did we do with the SCEMS meeting? Because normally SCEMS is that, we, we, I didn't, I, I don't think I transferred that meeting to another I meeting night. I don't remember. We'll have to call Bob or check in with Zach. What day was that? It would have normally been the It's 21st. normally the 21st, but because of the um, Mohawk Area Public something. Health Coalition, we did move it. And, we, and, mo and the uh, Franklin County Selectmen's Association was moved, too, to the following week because there was three meetings that night. Um, I guess I didn't put it in my phone because I don't, unless it was moved to the 20, no, the 28th was that. Um, you know what we could do, um, um, or you know what, I'll, we'll I'll call up, yeah, I'll call up, I'll make a note to call Zach. I forget what that was. Because I didn't, no. I didn't move it in my calendar. No. Any other comments there? No. no. Thank you, Kip. Carolyn, no? No. Okay. Nope. Oh, is there any public comments for anyone? Jeff? Any public Bruce? comments? Public comment? Oh. Bruce, come on, sit up. You got almost and again. 20, you have 27 seconds. 27 okay, seconds. I'll make it quick. Um, I don't know whether you're planning on a, uh, reappointing a sewer study committee, but if you are, I have checked with uh, most everybody, and there was two things I'd like to request. Right now, it's a committee of eight, so we need a quorum of five, mm. which makes it oh. much more difficult. So I'd either ask you to either find two more people or reduce the committee down to seven so we have a better chance of making a quorum. How, um, Bruce, how about um, a committee of seven with alternates? That would be fine too. Okay. That way nobody is If, nobody, if there is other excluded. people interested, that right. would be great. But what I'm saying is at yeah. least an appointed committee of seven because that the quorum would be four out of seven rather than five out of uh, eight, and we've never right. had eight. So we if we if like, we have seven, um, committee, and then how about two alternates? So That's that, fine. I, if I don't you have, have that eight, you can pick up that eighth person plus well, John that gives. Well, I. Uh, well, uh, yeah. well, that's true. John Kresge has resigned. I, mean, uh, I was just going to say that would an interest, and I don't know if he would be. One. Who? Eric showed an interest. That was my in other. That was my other request. Is is I, is I had just talked to Eric, and oh. uh, he said he would be interested in joining the committee. Well, that's good. Uh, does yeah. he need to send a letter of interest, or is yes. my yes. word yes. just or just no. who yeah. do we address it to, to Wendy? Wendy. Yeah. Wendy. Okay. Yeah. So that would be that would be. I've checked with everybody else. Uh, there's one question, but everybody else, myself, Jeff, Upton. Well, actually, I had gotten John Presky. You have already received that. Yeah, right. So every, everybody else is, uh, other than one okay, person, is still questioned, but everybody else is still is willing to be reappointed. So okay. that would be great. That's so great. So but that would, that would give us seven. You that know, would give yeah. you seven appointment. plus, right. and then we still have two alternates. If you can seven. find two of them. Yeah. yeah. I know. Uh, I did, someone asked me about it, too. Um, Dan, I can't think Dan's last name. Why can't I think it was last name? He worked with Is Jamie. Interested? 
Oh, Talega? Talega, Dan Talega. Oh, oh, right oh here great. Next to us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's a plumber, plumber right? right? Well, yeah. it, it yeah. doesn't matter how many alternates. I just said two. So, it, it was, right? yeah. yeah. You know, that's that's anybody that's interested. Right. Too many. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah but that way you always have enough people coming. For an alternate. An alternate. An alternate only. Well, just, you know, from a organizational point of view, every time if people come, sometimes, but not all the times, you restart as you've had to do so mm -hmm. much. You restart and re, we go over things. Yeah. There. Well, so, so a, we'll make that next meeting. We'll make that well, appointment. I, I, well, and yeah. Figure maybe, it out. maybe we should just. chair still? <laughs> maybe no, we should just look at no. one alternate then no, at no, this no. point. Oh, you're not? Yes. No, Bruce is. Bruce is oh, yes. you are now the chair? Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah Bruce is the chair. Well, until it gets uh, organized I'm, again. I'm vice chair that ended up. By default, at this point in time, till June 30th, okay, I don't so know what's going to happen to June 30th. They have a reorganization re after that. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. But okay. that was it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else? I was just going to do you want to no, yes, quickly yes, review please. what's on next week's yep. agenda. Yes. We'll have more appointments. What? That's the wrong. Um, no. Okay. That's done. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard back from him. There's a young man. I think he's young. Ryan Sherburn, who is. Um, He's been calling. He's building an off-the-grid house on Old Albany Road, and he just wants oh, to tell cool. you about or to ask you permission. That's I haven't heard back cool. from him again, though. Why would he have to ask our permission? I don't know. We'd love to hear about I it. I don't know. know. I, don't know I haven't heard from him again, so you unless he calls me back. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I don't know where he's building, though. Yeah. Um, I guess Unless there's concern, it's a the discontinued the part. It's a dis maintenance discontinued part of the road. Oh. So. <laughs> There's always a catch, huh? Yeah, yeah. so um, one day liquor sure license. That's why you want to um, yeah. uh, do you, you want to do a next week update on the IT? Yes, yes. Uh, she'll do, uh, Diana will do an update on the reworked IT grant. Thank you. Um, and also we didn't mention that we did get the uh, vulnerability oh, yes. preparedness. I saw that. Okay. Oh, that's but, wonderful. Great job. Um, thank you, Chris Curtis and Carolyn and, and Kevin for the work that you did. and. Um, We'll go what forward. was the final? What was the final dollar amount? It was the amount we asked for. It was forty-seven thousand something, and that includes both the prep Perm for the culvert work and the flood uh, floodplain. So building. that so that was the engineering, design, and permitting. I think. And permitting the whole thing. Okay, that's good. The actual work. No, no, no. That's mm -hmm. the next. That's in July. We have to get the engineering to get the cost of the actual project <laughs> but I, I, and then we're going to put it into the round in july awesome. because there's only five communities that right. are the I'm, mvp oh, who is certified i'm not confused okay. as to work i'm confused as that they're not actually going to Great. replace that culvert uh yes we're gonna we're gonna put an open bottom big culvert in yeah, on millville road yeah okay not route five. Oh no no okay no. all right we, um, we we got to have the state owns Route 5. I understand. And that the that's state. Why I just, okay. We're going to do this, and then we're going to say, geez, we put in a really good open bottom culvert, and you're, you're not doing your part. So. That's the next step. Um, good luck. I know. It, just I, a few meetings ago, I've given you a I list that I'm I don't it's getting up. bigger and bigger of things that we need to deal with, you know. Um, um, but can that? we put on um, ongoing projects? That was a. Can we put on Kelleher list. Drive culvert? And the update on that? Um, you mean just ask Kevin? Let's see. Well, um, I cannot use the grant. I don't believe I've talked no, to no, Chris no, about No, 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 no. We have to. We, we have to update. We have to update the MVP to include because we never. No one even knew. So it never even registered. But that's that second round, right? So what we're going to mm -hmm. do is um, let's engage, um, let's keep Chris in the mix on this because yeah. he knows the ins and outs mm -hmm. of this program. Um, actually, uh, Diana. Or, or Jeff, since you're still here, um, Jack will send this out, but maybe, um, Diana, you can uh, amend the capital improvement agenda to include Kelleher Drive. A discussion we'll, of that coming and up. That, yeah, and so we can discuss it at capital improvement because it's in failure and it's probably, what did Kevin we say? We don't know. A half a million we don't dollars. Know. A million. A uh, lot. A lot. So we're going to... The one the, I went through all the programs and stuff. I can't think. The only the only thing that fits is if we update our MVP program. Uh, you know, we have our MVP certification and our plan. plan. So we need to update our plan to include now Kelleher Drive failure and all that kind of stuff. So we need to look at it as a capital improvement. We got to have a meeting and. 
go through all the hoops that we did for the first, but it's worth it because, you know, I mean, this program pays out like every few months we would be able to get money. So, mm. I, I, it's <laughs> so far, enough. so far, because not anybody else is certified. Not yet. Hardly anybody else is certified. So there's like five, they just five towns, five communities in the so. state. Yeah. So, but that means we have to show up. We have to show up to go through the hoops, right? And it will that will be part okay. of it. Okay. Right. Yeah. A, a uh, motion to right dissolve. Nothing Second. We can, nothing we can do between now and then. All those in favor. I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. I forgot. All those in favor. Aye. It's worth a half a million dollars. Aye. Is it, is it it's okay worth it to do it. Aye. I did. I did. It's at nine. Yeah, so you dissolved again. the meeting.